the size of that bat. You're watching a Fox Sports presentation of BASS. Final day of the Bassmaster Southern Open schedule of events. This is the semi-pro level to make it to the Bassmaster Elite Series. And we are here at Lake Hartwell in Anderson, South Carolina for the final St. Croix Bassmaster Open of the year for the Southern Open Division. We have some fun fishing in store for you. If you like tight competition, if you like a lot of fish catches, you should be excited to be tuned into Lake Hartwell today because the top 10 best anglers out of a 200 plus angler field have made it to championship Saturday here, where one person today will punch their ticket to the Bassmaster Classic and already filling Elite Series spots for the 2023 season. There's Green Pond Landing, our takeoff location for the day. About an hour ago, these anglers left the dock and they were fishing for an eight hour day. Championship Saturday here, top 10 going head to head to head. A little bit of a lead for first place over second coming into the day, about a three pound distance from first to second. But then from second to 10th, it's only two pounds for the rest of the field. So tight fishing for them. What's at stake this week? $40,000 for the winning boater this week. We already crowned a co-angler champion from the back of the boat yesterday. And the top three in the points race qualify for the Elite Series. We've already decided that and we will get into that. One of our qualifiers for next year is fishing in the top 10 today. And obviously when we mentioned it, the big carrot today, the Bassmaster Classic berth. Everyone fishing today will punch their ticket to the Classic if they do win this event when it comes down to 3 p.m. Eastern time later today when we start the weigh-in. We've got a special guest today joining us on the set. We've got Ronnie Moore, myself, we have Mike Sukon, and we have hey. the 2022 Bassmaster Classic Champion, Jason Christie. Got it done just a few months ago on this very body of water, $300,000 and a huge uh, winning prize for you. So Lake Hartwell, Jason, has been a special place for you all of your career, but in the fall, you've also had a lot of success in what these anglers are kind of fishing for today. Yeah, watching takeoff, you know, it was, that's a special place. And it's just funny, I recognize a lot of the places out there and you know, it's just one of those, you know, you're going to see a lot of fish. There's a lot of options out there. And, and that's what I love about it. I think the best thing about Hartwell is you can spread out. You can do your own deal. And uh, there's just lots and lots of different ways to get to where you need to be. Jason Christie is going to be with us all day. And so will Mike Sukon and Mike Sukon got tight weights, only five pounds separating first to 10th. And we've seen huge comebacks on this body of water yeah, every event. This body of water. We saw the closest classic we've seen in like forever, Ronnie, with Too close. Ten, 10 ounces separate. Yeah, Jason will vibe. And I got a lot of questions for him this today, and uh, we'll run them down. But we got the elite guys, Ronnie. Brian Smith, Cooper Gallant, Joey Sifuentes have made the elites. We have made the Elite Series field finalized for this division, and we'll get into all of that and more today. Thank you for joining us on Fox Sports 1. As we go down to South Carolina, this is where we are on the Savannah River chain of lakes. You know, we've got four or five lakes that run the border of South Carolina to Georgia and Lake Hartwell being one of the top ones. Kiwi just north of that. Lake Hartwell funnels down and all, all, goes all the way down to Clarks Hill um, in Augusta, Georgia at the bottom of that state. Looking at our lay of the lake, we've got 10 anglers out there today, like we mentioned. Matt Pengreg, David Gaston, Brian Smith, John Garrett, so many others, and we'll get into the leader and more. Paul Marks, though, a guy started right in the middle of our top 10, sixth place coming into today, and he is a Lake Lanier guy. And if you know Lake Lanier, you know it sets up very similar to Lake Harwell, a spotted bass guy fishing offshore, and he said, I'm going to be fishing deep almost all day today. You'll see that, a drop shot in my hand. Oh, pretty quick start, just a bunch of small ones. I had a... Uh... Had a pretty good one get off, I think, right under the boat, but that's how it goes. I've lost one every morning so far, so I was hoping today I wouldn't. <laughs> we mentioned it, Paul Marks from Coming Georgia right there on Lake Lanier, watching some of his catches from this morning because looking at the Bass Track leaderboard, Paul Marks, second place right now, moving up from sixth. It's a tight top 10, and Jason, you know that. A lot of the times we'll see a guy jump out after two days of competition, three days of competition, and they'll have a three pound lead themselves, but the rest of the top 10, just within ounces each spot. And so sixth place, 
nothing, no big deal to make up that deficit and maybe take home the win today. I'm telling you right now, anybody in the top 10 has an opportunity to win today. Um, you know, Hartwell offers a lot, you know, the spotted bass. One thing about them, a lot of them tend to be the same size, kind of cookie cutters, you know, but you know, you have the large mouth. A guy catches a five or six pound large mouth, you know, another four pound spot and he's right there. It's, and that's one of the things that's cool about Hartwell. It's always close and you know, when the screen came up, I noticed that everybody's spread out. In most lakes, whenever we have tournaments, there's always a key area or a key zone. Hartwell always fishes from the, you know, the upper end of the river to the dam. Everybody's spread out and everybody's doing something different. Paul Mark's just 21 years old, fishing in the top 10 today. He's hooked up right now, actually. And Paul, when you have experience on spotted bass fisheries, you feel comfortable no matter how finicky they may get offshore. And so for him, he was extremely confident, keeping a lot of info close yeah, to his vest. five, not much. <laughs> Already with a limit in the boat, as he just said. He'll start culling now. That fish will put him in the lead, Ryan. He was two ounces back of uh, Tristan McCormick. Got a great top 10 full of young anglers, like we said, with Paul Marks. We have also some college champions in John Garrett and Tristan McCormick and Lucas Murphy. We have plenty of seasoned opens pros and guys who travel the nation fishing tournaments. And then we obviously have an elite series pro also in the top 10, Brian Noon. Looking at our unofficial leaderboard before that fish catch, Paul Marks was just behind. Tristan McCormick will probably take the lead with that catch. And Tristan, we just talked, we talked to him on Monday, the final day of the classic college classic bracket that we just did on Fox Sports 1. We got to talk to Tristan McCormick and he was the champion of that event just a year ago. He's representing the entire college series on the Opens this year, and we got to see him right now on the final day of an Open. It's always what you want. You get free entry into the Opens to take advantage of them, and he has had a pretty successful Opens campaign and now gets a shot at going to another Bassmaster Classic today. Well, guys, we got five. for about five pounds, but it's a start. I'm seeing a lot. They're acting good. So I, I like that a lot. Being active on my bait. I've had a lot of bites, missed a couple, but as long as they keep chasing it around, that's that's what I'm happy about. You can catch a lot of small ones out here and you can also catch a lot of big ones. It's just a numbers deal. So we're gonna put around here. We're close to the ramp. I hadn't fished any of this stuff really, so we're gonna try to catch a few release bass and let that sun get up and go down to the primary area. I kind of changed my plan up a little bit, but there's a lot of local tournaments out here today and boats are running by like crazy, so I don't know. We'll see. We've got a long day. Watching some of Tristan's catches from this morning. He just mentioned he just filled his limits to Paul's unofficial lead that he just took with his limit fish is now nullified as McCormick's back in our unofficial lead. There's a lot of guys with eyes on the screen this time of year on Hartwell. They like to get up there high and swim and move. We'll see some guys fishing close to the bank today. You, it, I would say your style, but you won the Bassmaster Classic here just a few months ago, kind of riding both styles, fishing up on the bank, around docks, power fishing, big line, big jig, thing like that, things like that. But also we saw you put to work your forward facing sonar. Some of these fish that just swim in the middle of these ditches of the creeks. Yeah. And one big thing, and the reason why they do that here, not only the clear water, but the blueback herring really affect these fish. Yeah, they, they literally just swim around uh, and just chase bait. It, they, they live on structure I'd say less than a few weeks, you know, three or four weeks in a year. Other than that, they're just chasing bait. And, you know, that was my philosophy during the classic was to go out there and do what Tristan's doing, try to catch a good limit and then get up on the bank and try to catch some of those big largemouth. You're seeing a six pound, six ounces, our biggest fish of the week so far. Multiple largemouth in the 
five pound category and that's kind of the special thing about Lake Hartwell as well. You can target largemouth specifically and get a kind of away from spotted bass. You may catch one here and there on accident, but largemouth, spotted bass, there's two different styles. That's why it also, you mentioned it, when we see the map, we see them spread out all across the lake because you can pick your poison on what's your style, where you want to be, and what species you want to target. Jason, can you imagine what uh, Brian New did yesterday to catch 19 pounds, the biggest bag of the event by at least a pound and a quarter. So my question is, did he have spots or largemouth? He had all largemouth yesterday, and, that's, and on day one he had, um, it was a split bag, three and two. That's what happens right there. You go out there and you get the right bites, you can catch that 19 or 20, but you can also go out there and try to do that and catch 10 pounds. That's so, what happened, yeah, 10 that, on day that, one. Yeah, that, he had the biggest jump from 98th place yeah. to our top five. And that's what gets a lot of guys. The spotted bass are, are consistent. Bunch of little rats. Seen a white squirrel. Got a one pound spotted bass. Just trying to fish some of this shallow, shallow brush to see if you can't pluck a bit real big and early. I ain't really I've caught a bunch of fish every day. Getting a limit's not the problem, but catching size is. You'll like this, and if it works out well for David Gaston, it'll work out well for the show today because he's been chasing wolf packs, two to three, maybe even eight to ten fish schools that we would say but just cruising the bank in a foot of water or less mm -hmm. he's been throwing top water out in front of them and catching most of his weight sitting in sitting tied for second with ten largemouth it's very interesting to see you have the same exact weight after two days for guys like Tristan McCormick and David Gaston who had ten spots versus ten largemouth right. that's kind of the thing today can largemouth beat out the spots can spots beat out the largemouth you know usually when I fish there, I fish there in the spring mostly, and then a couple of events in the fall. Usually, largemouth will win, or a combination. You know, like new yesterday, having 19 pounds. Somebody today is going to run across a couple of those big largemouth, and and that that'd be my guess. If I was putting money on it, that would be that would be where I would put it. Yeah, yeah I get sucked in watching this. Well, it's been kind of slow. Like I was just talking water. to you, we ran. A little different route this morning. I came to some of the stuff I caught fish on yesterday. I came to it right away instead of when I hit it yesterday at like nine or ten o'clock. And just like that, I just threw the three of them, and they all did like the tunnel and went down to it and didn't bite it. So we've just been running from point to point to point. We got one lousy little spot in there that weighs probably about a pound, and caught him on a caffeine shad and. And see if we can't get a few more. They've been up on these rocks in the morning, catching pretty quick, been hitting a lot of spots, as many as I can. But yesterday, it seemed like every fish that reacted to the drop shot um, bit it, and this morning has not been the case. Be interesting to see if it is like that all over the lake. I know the lake's been kind of changing, and this lake's big enough where it changes in a different section. Uh, before it'll, you know, affect other parts of it. So, you know, if you're five miles that way, they might be biting like crazy. But they bit for me in this area the last two days, so I'm gonna stick with it. Lucas Murphy, one of our college anglers from just a few years ago, Grand Valley State of Michigan, a two-time champion, won at Cherokee and Smith Lake from Michigan, has now transplanted down to South Carolina but fishing Lake Harwell for the first time this week. And he is in our top 10. We'll see how he does and the rest of our top 10. As we look at our unofficial leaderboard, it's now updated with Paul Mark's fifth fish and Tristan McCormick's fifth keeper. Those guys are at the top of the leaderboard waiting for our day two leader, Derek Lettinen. Had a three pound lead. We'll see if he can get on the board shortly after this commercial break. We'll be right back with Bassmaster Live. Live coverage of the St. Croix Bassmaster Southern Open at Lake Hartwell is sponsored by Humminbird, Mercury, Nitro Boats, 
Stand by. Bass Pro Shops. Welcome back to Bassmaster Live here for the final St. Croix Bassmaster Southern Open of the year at Lake Hartwell. Anderson, South Carolina is the host. It is the final day. Championship Saturday, we have whittled the field down from about 200 voters down to just the top 10. And those top 10 are vying for $40,000 in the top prize today. Also a birth to the Bassmaster Classic, which is a guaranteed $10,000. And if you're as good as our guest today, Jason Christie, it can be as high as $300,000. And Lake Hartwell, I will say, as we look at this map, a pretty iconic Bassmaster venue. We've been here quite a bit. We've been here a lot of different seasons of the year. There's not many lakes in the country you can go in February and March, and you can also go in October and have good fishing all year long and, and really dramatic storylines as we see a couple of our anglers in a four box right here. Brian New, Elite Series champion and angler. In the top left, Matt Pangrak, talk show host and opens pro, top right. And then we have a new elite qualifier, Bryant Smith, in the bottom left. And like we mentioned last segment, Lucas Murphy, a two-time college champion in the bottom right of your screen. Yeah, so, you know, I've got two little ones. One tiny one and one little one. Uh, caught one on a dock, you know, just running up here this morning. The one single dock will stop the fish. And, Caught a little bitty spot on it. Then I got up here and fishing some brush, and I, I called another one right there a second ago. And you know, it's probably a two pounder, not a giant, but better than nothing. So, kind of going to go with what we did yesterday. We're just going to fish brush, and we're going to fish docks, and probably throw a buzz bait on just going down the bank a little bit. And hopefully, we can do what we did yesterday and maybe actually even a little more. As long as it's enough, that's that's the main thing. We just need to catch us a bag. We gotta catch a bag today because um, the guy leading, he's he's gonna catch another decent bag at least. And uh, you know, plus the other guys, you know, they're, they didn't get here being dumb and stupid. They can fish, so. We're gonna have to catch them. We just, we gotta do our job today, but the only chance we have to win is to catch another giant bag. And um, caught the biggest bag of the tournament yesterday. I wanna do it again today. If we can do that, we'll have a shot. I mean, I think we're a little over three pounds, maybe three and a half pounds back because we did so bad the first day. But, um, Hopefully we can catch enough today. I don't know. We're going to swing hard, but we hit it. That was Brian New in the top left of your screen. I used to uh, have a hate-hate relationship with Hartwell. And after the Open in 2020, I decided that we could get some makeup and come and lead the first day of the year. And out to Mac Pangrak. Oklahoma boy's got a spinning rod in his hand. Looks pretty familiar. Uh, <laughs> Not quite Slow as tall start as to the morning. Every day it's been a little bit different. It seems like the there's a lot more fish that are relating to uh, tiny little shad in the area where I am down in Lightwood, which um, I'm sure it's fantastic if you're a bass, not good for the shad, not good for me. Uh, Cause it kind of pulls them off of, of, of uh, where I'm catching and they roam a lot more. But there's been a window every day. I've caught probably 30, 40 keepers every day where uh, I can get up on. So like we have, we have deep timber right here and then it comes up, there's a couple cane piles and then just a long flat point. And I've been catching roamers that are up on the flat point. Um, and that's where the better fish seem to be. A lot of the smaller ones seem to be on the cane. There's one. And that's on cane, and it's about six inches long. Ah! It's okay. And they're going right there. Like, going, going. 
You always have to be ready here. Always. He just dropped below the boat to catch one, but he said they're going out there, which means they're schooling on the surface most likely. And how hard is that, Jason, when they are feeding on bait fish? Matt said the size of his thumbnail. So I don't know how big his thumbnail is, but if it's a normal <laughs> yeah. thumbnail, yeah. It's, a little. it's a very small yeah. bait fish to try to imitate. So the last them. couple of days I've tried yeah. to catch these pound and a halfers. Uh, and I have one that's like 160 something, but that that's me zero good today. So I'm just focusing. It's like probably one in 40, one in 50 of the, of the good fish will eat it. Probably half of them will look at it and go down on it. But it's, it's just a patience game and covering as much as you can. It seems like it gets really tough uh, around noon. But there's uh, usually kind of right before that, there's a morning bite and then a uh, afternoon bite. Yeah, when they get keyed in on that little stuff, um, you know, it's just super, super tough to catch them. I was actually trying to film a show last week and I sat with the power poles down for an hour trying to figure out how to catch them. And I finally did, you know, it's after a, little a long slow time. this morning. <laughs> Uh, which I figured it would be. I mean, these fish are, man, these fish are so educated. They could probably go over to Clemson and get a diploma. Uh, just running some piles that I know got some fish in them. And I see them on the forward facing sonar. That's the whole deal is just look at them and throw at them. And you throw out about 200 of them and one of them bites. Um, they're a little more active than they were yesterday. I'll say that they're following it more. They're following it more quickly. Um, you know, that first morning they you would throw I would throw that jig in there and they would just shoot down like they would track with it, almost kind of blend with it. They were following it so close yesterday. They were kind of slowly meandering down. Um, today they're they're tracking it pretty good, but I don't know why they're not eating. There's a bunch here. But like I said, these fish are, they've seen every bait under the sun. So getting them to bite is a huge. Bryant Smith from California, He's gonna be traveling the country a couple extra weeks next year as he fishes the Bassmaster Lead Series as we make a move towards David Gaston and Mike Sukon, we've seen a lot of hot runs in Bassmaster competition, but let me read the last five events. I that was David just Gaston looking at his. It's very impressive. Sixth in Mississippi at Ross Barnett, 28th at Lake Oneida in Syracuse, New York. Sixth at the Chesapeake Bay in Maryland, the last time we were here on right Fox there, Sports yeah. 1. Third at the Red River in Shreveport, Louisiana, and this week in the top 10, tied for second in Lake Harwell, South Carolina. And he's also oh, second crack. place Can't in the overall AOI points. One more good event for him, and he will make his Elite Series dream come true as well. Oh, I love that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's a good one. No, he ain't a good one. I had to buy flyers this morning. Yesterday, I went to throw my popper in, threw my flyers in too. You got to be a little bit lucky fishing these wolf packs because, you know, you got three, four, or five fish out there. A lot of times you'll have a couple good ones, you know, and a couple not so good. You got to be a little bit lucky. Yeah, he did. Why couldn't that other one did it like that? To trigger and, those know, bigger ones. You're talking about your shoot just the other day. What? Did you end up figuring out to get him to bite do a little? Banks. I can't say that. Oh, We're you can't? Here. Oh. I might have to use that the next time we go to Hartwell. I had to. <laughs> I thought you were going to tell us. Yeah, no, I had to actually go to something super, super fast. Uh, where, like exactly what he's doing right there. I had to just reel my top water in as fast as I could and just trick them. If it was, I mean, if it was slow, they would get too good to look at it. I had to reel it fast. I had to use something clear. Just had to. David Gaston's been the guy we've kept our eye on as he's seeking out those wolf packs of fish. And when we say wolf packs, it's two or three, maybe four or five, largemouth cruising up shallow, waiting to ambush 
a bait. They take turns kind of, and you always hope, like Jason said, the biggest of the bunch takes turns when it's your time to, to see them and follow them down the bank. David Gasson said this wasn't a good one, but it is better than most of the spotted bass we have seen this morning. Largemouth tend to weigh a little bit heavier. They are bigger in stature, especially those aggressive ones cruising the bank. We'll see if David Gasson can keep that going, track that wolf pack down the bank. But as we look at our unofficial leaderboard, Tristan McCormick's early five fish limit still has him in the lead. If you look at Derek Lettinen right there in third place, our day two leader, one on the board for him. We will get an update from him when we get back on Bassmaster Live. Whoa! Look at the size of that bass! Live coverage of the St. Croix Bassmaster Southern Open at Lake Hartwell is presented by Mossy Oak Fishing. Welcome back to Lake Hartwell, South Carolina. Anderson, South Carolina, the host this week, Green Pond Landing. If you're in the area and you want to check out the final day weigh-in, we will crown a champion around 3 p.m. Eastern time today at that weigh-in site. It's a great venue, plenty of parking, and man, they've really updated that place. We just saw the Bassmaster Classic there a couple months ago, and we saw thousands of fans lining the banks. It's a remarkable tournament venue here at Lake Hartwell. We go over to our day one and day two leader. He was tied for the lead after day one with 17 pounds, 13 ounces. And after another solid day two of competition, Derek Lettinen became our official leader and had about a three pound lead coming into the final day of our second place. Run down this little stretch right here and I'm gone. Of course, it had to be bottom. Oh, it hey, this is number one. Not a big one, but it's number one. Put them in the box. He's going down a bank, throwing no jig, isn't he? We will see Derek Lettinen working a crankbait and a jig going down the bank. Woodruff, South Carolina. About an hour away, Ronnie. Close enough to make a lot of money at Lake Hartwell, and that is what Derek does best every weekend fishing tournaments here. He said, man, I'm not, I'm not trying to do anything different for the open. I'm gonna treat it just like a normal weekend tournament. I know how Here's to catch them here. I know where right I like to catch them. So I'm just gonna do my thing and, and hopefully it works out. I believe he was in our top 10, or at least in contention for the top 10 in 2020 in the fall doing what he does best and we'll see him fishing just behind himself today really really not had many competitors in his regions other than Shane Leinberger day one both of those anglers started around the 6 and 20 that creek and yesterday afternoon they both looked at each other and said I think we fished around each other enough that we both know that this place is a dying area so they're finding some different areas to fish today Shane Leinberger former Bassmaster Elite Series Pro A lot Just of fish catching. This will all be over. <laughs> Boy, we got to get rid of them little guys. I knew that. Have to be 12 inches to be a keeper this week, but that's not when you want He's to be smaller away. than the one on green. That ain't good. You know, one of the things I'm sitting here looking at, you look at Hartwell for, for people that's not been there. You know, you see these clay banks and, and there's a lot going on under the water that you don't see. Um, you know, we looked at the leader earlier and when I commented going down the bank throwing a jig, I mean, there's stumps out there, there's trees, there's tons of brush piles, there's cane, there's all kinds of stuff out there. And that's where live scopes come in, you know, and made it that's why you see so many guys whenever I would fish there, always looking at it, trying to throw at something. Especially this time of the year, Lake Hartwell, it's not full pool. They start to bring it down for that fall, you know, the drawdown. Uh, Shane Leinberger said since about Tuesday or Wednesday of this week during practice, they started to lower it a little bit. It's been about a foot lower from when they started practice earlier yeah. this week. So 
it's making its way down and these fish are accustomed to that. The only thing it does is it throws anglers off as you wonder where they're going, but right. there are stumps along the way. There are rock lines. There are, I mean, different colored clay and sand. Is that Mark Zona? We have a Zona sighting behind Tristan <laughs> in the boat. <laughs> Him and Davy Height. It is Davy's home state. Maybe they did go <laughs> party barge in it this morning. Are they supposed to have some wind today? Because there's some of these guys like Brian and David there. Everything's pretty flat. I would anticipate they get some wind. Things are going to change. The only reason to practice, I was going down back to look. I'm like, this is going to open the slingshot. Explain that a little bit. We talk about David and Brian. You talk about Derek, maybe Lineberger as well. A couple of the guys who are running the banks. Why is it more important for them to get a little bit of wind? compared to the rest of the guys fishing, you know, deeper water? Well, just a lot of things move. You get, you get the bait moving, um, but the biggest thing is that water's clear. I mean, you can typically see there four, five, six foot deep. You get that wind going, they just act differently and you're able to trick them a lot easier. Around noon is supposed to pick at about eight miles an hour. Oh, uh, that's... That's two right now. Yeah. From the Northeast. Yeah. And H just a little. That's not that's not a bunch of wind, but it's enough. Yeah, but that's you know on Hartwell the way it gets cut up and stuff, and you're in these pockets. That's not a lot. You know, for the main lake, um, you know, we noticed on the screen before that that it's blowing a little bit out there. You get in these pockets, you want some wind to get them moving. Of course, you know, if I'm hunting wolf packs, I want to be able to see too. I asked David on the phone last night. We're watching him right now. He's one who, who did catch one on top water, one of those wolf packs this morning. He said, has there been a cadence that matters to you? Or is it just putting it close to him? Do you let it sit once you splash it in front of him? Does it matter how far out in front of him? And he said, man, I've caught him, you know, accidentally casting right on their head. I've mm -hmm. caught him out in front, moving it. Most of the time he said he's also had those fish, if they don't commit in the initial first two or three feet of him moving his pop bar, they will chase it all the way to the trolling motor and finally commit right before right. the boat. You know, and that's why we call them wolf packs. They literally get in little groups and they hunt like wolves. They're looking for anything in front of them. Um, typically, with me chasing them, you know, I've learned a lot over the years. I've, I've been at an event, I was at an event once where I just put my trolling motor and followed a wolf pack for a mile. And they just went down the bank hunting and all of a sudden they came to a main lake point and they turned and they just went straight out in deep water. It's, and that's what makes them tough. They don't live hmm. in an area or a pocket. They just go, I mean, there's no telling where they may end up. But to answer your question, usually if you get around them, they're gonna eat something, you know. I would be going on high. You know, if I was hunting, but with the low light, I bet he's having a little trouble seeing. Hey, but he's in the top 10, so I guess you can't no. argue what he's doing. 10 largemouth to his credit. And I believe he was the one I talked to about that. I said, David, it's kind of hard for you to go back to an area the next day and is the wolf pack 15 feet in front of you when you pull up and you go the wrong way or how do you know where you're gonna find them because they are kind of homeless fish. They're, they're visually sight fish that you can follow and see, but you don't know where they're gonna be if you show up at noon, if you show up at 8 a.m. And he said he did the same thing, he followed them, they went all the way to the point, they would not get to the point, they'd swim across out in deep water and all of a sudden they would just disappear and then They'd go down the other bank and you'd see them an hour later come up that same shoreline. They wouldn't go back and forth. They'd go they, all around in a, in a circle. They stay in the three. general regional. It's like their turf. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's our turf. Mm -hmm. They're talking about cane piles. We did a big story at the Classic. Cane piles is like a, uh, some of them are ginormous, but remember a few years ago, we won a classic on, Casey Ashley won his classic on, he said, an old cane pile that was as small as like a football. Right. And a fish was sitting on that, and he just happened to catch the winning fish. That's what blows my mind right now. Whenever I fished the open there a couple of years ago, it was all cane piles. I mean, you... Huge, they're huge, describe them. Well, you, 
I mean, it wasn't so much the pile. It doesn't matter if the pile was small or big, but old. Yeah. You, I pull up. I would pull up, make three casts, and then go to the next one. I mean, with I would cast, look at live scope. I would either catch one or there would be nothing there, and then you go to the next one. I would fish a hundred of them a day, and I have not seen anybody doing that, and that's what surprises me. I figure when I got here this morning, we were going to be watching eight of the ten oh. running cane piles, and. And I'm just, I'm, I'm surprised. A lot of these guys, they called it the circus. Anywhere from Andersonville Island right there by takeoff down towards the dam. Yeah. It's been, Brian New put it, I said, what happened on day one versus day two? He said, I went to the, I went to the carnival and tried to get a ticket and they were sold out and I was standing outside. He said, I never got a, I never got a good rotation. I was always behind people. There was people on the spots I wanted to get on and now with 10 anglers, and about half of them fishing cane and brush piles, they have them kind of to themselves. Lucas uh -huh. Murphy hooked up once again. Look how flat the water is. There we go. Took a little bit, but we finally got one. Oh my gosh, oh gosh. Hmm. Not bad. Honestly, could be it, like yesterday. I didn't get to all that stuff I just fished till about right now is and it's when I started catching fish. And could be something to that. Best fish we've seen on the morning. Mm -hmm. Good spot of bass there for Lucas Murphy. When he says, oh no, if you're watching at home, we've seen it twice already now. When someone hooks one out there deep, lands that fish, they start schooling and busting on the surface not far away. Seen some developments it looks like. Shane Leinberger, maybe we'll get in with him when we get back. He is in our unofficial lead right now. Tristan McCormick, Paul Marks, Derek Lettinen, and Brian New, your top five. We'll be right back with Bassmaster Live at Lake Hartwell. Start Saturday strong with Big Noon Saturday as Blake Corum and the number four Michigan Wolverines take their electrifying show on the road to Indiana today, noon Eastern on Fox. We've got a big Saturday here in store at Lake Hartwell as well. Any cast can be a game changer this week. The weights are tight. Any big largemouth, we've seen five plus pounders. We've seen six pounders this week. Any fish of that size can flip the leaderboard on its head. And Shane Leinberger, just a few moments ago, hooked up with a game changer. Come here. Come here. Oh, God. Oh, my God, dude. That's a seven pounder. Mm. Oh, my God. Oh. <laughs> Yes, there's old Jojo, huh? Come on with it. God, look at that. Lake Hartwell special, baby, come on. God, oh Lord, thank you Lord, God. Oh dude, oh. That's what it's all about right there, buddy. I'm telling you, that's what it's all about. If that don't get you going on FS1 this morning, I don't know what's wrong with y'all. <laughs> and that's what can happen up on the bank. Oh, God. That's the bite we need right there. Oh, man. <laughs> I can't. Oh, Lord. <laughs> That brings out a kid and all of us right there. Where's he from? 
from the Lake Norman region, only about <coughs> two hours north those, as we go out live. Yeah, Lincoln with him, but this is his hometown. Yeah. Those guys out there live and die with a buzz bait. I mean, like, live and die. Neat to see a 50 year old gets like, that excited catching yeah. a big fish. I mean, yeah, that's why we fish right there. You know, you, you just you get excited to catch one, but when you do it in a tournament, you do it on the last day of the tournament when you got a chance to win. Shows him in the lead with four fish. And that is, we, we've seen a 6-6 six, six for the big fish of the tournament. He caught a 5-4 on day one when he was tied for the lead. Yesterday, he lost a three-pounder, and he said that would have been huge for him. So it's crazy day to day how you can live and die up there. But if you can just survive and not have your worst day be so terrible, you have a yeah, shot no, like today. No shortage of fish in Lake Hartwell. That's for darn sure. A lot of that happened yesterday, too. It's like... Slowly but surely. Oh, sorry. Probably two pounds, but see how fat that one is compared to that last one? Got a lot of, a lot of shad in there. Yep, I think it's just that. Just the timing. Just had to wait for that sun to get over there. It's spot, or spots are they're pretty visual feeders, so they want to be able to see what they can eat, and when it's dark, they can't see as well. Yeah. Kind of like a smallmouth. Lucas Murphy talking about how many fish are in Lake Hartwell. He's had a good morning so far fishing offshore for spotted bass as we get a great visual right there tucked in the Spartanburg, South Carolina, Greenville, Anderson, South Carolina region right by I-85. Derek Lettening going under a bridge. Beautiful visuals here at Lake Hartwell. And the weather this week has been very favorable post-hurricane. They were worried the hurricane was going to encroach last weekend into South Carolina and maybe dump a bunch of rain, maybe a lot of wind. The weather has been beautiful there, and Fox's Amy Freeze gives us a lowdown on what these anglers should expect weather-wise the rest of Championship Saturday. Hey there, anglers. I'm Fox Weather's Amy Freeze. We've got the forecast for the St. Croix Bassmaster Southern Open. The weather in Lake Hartwell, South Carolina today looks beautiful. Ideal conditions for catching some hogs. You can expect a mix of sun and clouds and a high of 76, low humidity and a light breeze, but the winds will be low enough so the pros can pretty much cast their lines anywhere they want to. Have a great weekend, and remember, you can download the Fox Weather app or stream Fox Weather from your favorite connected TV device. Thank you, Amy Freeze, as we go back out with Lucas Murphy. Lucas like, is, uh, we mentioned it, a multi-time college champion coming from Michigan, winning in the state of Tennessee and in Alabama. Now he lives in South Carolina, actually works in the industry for Strike King Lou's and rather outdoors right there in Columbia, South Carolina. You got him a little hot spot there at the same cast. Exactly. There you go. We replay in his catch Holy from just surely. a minute ago. <laughs> <laughs> oh, sorry. Maybe not such a hot spot. He 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 has had the best I size one of his spotted bass, bass, bass on this spot. You can see how a lot of short lot of they are there. fatter. That's the one big thing. You'll see a longer largemouth that are skinnier other than Shane Lineberger's, but for these spotted bass, you'll most of the time see them pretty full up yep. because they're I mean, out there chasing that bait. 
just the timing. Just had to wait for that sun to get up there. Spot or spots are they're pretty visual feeders, so they want to be able to see what they can eat, and when it's dark, they can't see as well. Kind of like a smallmouth. Those are good ones. Out to a four box with Tristan McCormick, Derek Lettinen, David Gaston, and Lucas Murphy. You've got top left and bottom right doing the same pattern offshore, and you've got bottom left and top right doing the same pattern. Most of the time when you think, Jason, fans at home, other weekend fishermen may think you're going to catch your biggest fish early in the morning, especially for the guys like Derek and David who are fishing shallow, but oftentimes that sun helps you be able to visibly see them farther away and you can have a great midday portion of the day. And that's what Derek Lettinen said, 11.30 to 2 o'clock has been his biggest fish window. He can catch some fish in the morning normally, but if you're worried about him only with one fish today as the day two leader, 11.30 to, to 2 o'clock has been huge for him this week. And there's something about Hartwell um, and a lot of lakes across the country where that is the case. Uh, you got blueback herring, but you know, my belief is they get out and roam with the low light, you know, the shade and that sun gets up. Two things happen. One, you can see better, like you said, and two, you know, they may hold up on a stump, a stick, a dock and make it a lot, make your chances a lot better to be able to catch them. These anglers are running and gunning today. Brian knew that's what he loves to do best, bounce around, but he said, I'm gonna bounce around in a different region of the lake. I'm gonna stay in the Tougaloo today. That's where I caught 19 pounds. Brian knew the rest of the guys trying to chase down Derek Lettinen, our day two leader, and unofficially today they have done so. Derek slipping down to fifth place with just one fish in his live well. Shane Leinberger though, making a run from ninth place in the event coming into today, into the top spot thanks to a six pounder unofficially in his live well right now. One of the biggest bass of the event. We'll see if we can match that when we come back. Whoa! Look at the size of that bass! You're watching a Fox Sports presentation of BASS. Welcome back to Lake Hartwell, the final day of the St. Croix Bassmaster Southern Open at Lake Hartwell, Anderson, South Carolina. We cut the field from about 200 or so pros fishing on the boater side to just the top 10. And everyone is in contention here at Lake Hartwell going into the final day. Almost every time we're here, no matter what time of year it is, if you're in the top 10, you have a shot to win. We've seen anglers tied for the lead going into the final day. We've seen anglers with big leads going into the final day, but you never can be certain. And a guy who's joining us today on set, Jason Christie, our guest for Championship Ooh, Saturday. Right, Just a couple up. months ago, you had a fantastic Championship Sunday and got to take home the biggest tournament in the sport of bass fishing, the Bassmaster Classic title. Oh my, like I have goosebumps right now. You know, right there is what it's all about. Um, that's why I came back to the Elite Series and I mean, it's, every time I watch that, I mean, I just, I literally am a loss for words. This is the site just a few months ago, March of 2022, right there in Greenville, South Carolina, Lake Hartwell, and all the confetti was flying and all of the smoke was shooting off in your favor that week. As a tournament fisherman, you know that there are a lot more losses than wins as we bring it into the Bassmaster Studio, sponsored by Marathon. Ronnie Moore here with Mike Sukon and our guest, Jason Christie. 
and you've seen it before. You've been on the other side of classics where you had to shake the guy's hand as he had the confetti shot off in his favor. What was it like finally realizing a lifelong dream? You've won a lot of blue trophies, but to win the big one, the classic trophy, and probably means something way bigger for you. There's just, there's not words. I mean, it's, I know it's, you hear that a lot, but I just can't describe it. The feeling of all that I've worked for up to that moment, for it to happen on stage in front of my family, uh, all the friends and, and fans, just everything went down exactly like it was supposed to. And you brought some key baits in for us, uh, from not only from the fall of 2020 when you made the top 10 here, but also in your classic victory, you used a jig and you used a, uh, your new sonar minnow. We'll get into that a little bit as well later. We'll show some of the fans at home a little bit more technique about it, but these are some catches from you. I got to ride with you on the final day of practice. You know, we get to pick one guy as media and we get to go with, and I got to go with you uh, for a lot of storyline reasons. You were going to be a guy we had on camera day one, and you went and visited this spot. How special was this one creek channel and that led back, you know, into the to the back of a pocket all week for you? What's funny is I wasn't even going to fish here. Um, I found this spot the last day of practice, which was Monday. And I thought, well, you know, well, there's some fish there. Um, and I got a, you know, I had a good boat number. And I thought, I'm going to go and start here and get me some fish. You know, calm down, calm the cameraman down. And it ended up being a spot that carried me. And, and uh, it was a one-two punch, starting deep, going shallow late. Uh, there's, there just wasn't a pattern that was great. I had, a, you know, a few things going that was good. So I had to lean on several different things to be able to uh, to win. But definitely this this ditch right here, I think I caught almost everything the first day out of it. You know, it kind of it kind of wasn't that good the last day, but it did give me one four and a half pounder. A lot of these anglers who fish offshore at Hartwell are specifically fishing for spotted bass, but you fishing in this ditch that led back in a creek. As soon as you kind of tucked your nose in between the two points and you were inside that creek, a lot more largemouth in those spot in those uh, offshore, you know, out in the middle of the ditch, those spots. But this is what we expected Jason Christie to do, and we saw some of that emotion oh. on the final day. Because one thing that we'll see today, there will be guys who catch one or two fish, maybe five small ones but they have all day to call those out. And you caught one key fish on the final day in your, in your ditch and were able to fill your limit, you know, with the large mouth like you expected to. Yeah, there was everything back there. I mean, and that was the cool thing about being able to look at them. I could tell pretty much what was what. You know, the spots were swimming around five or six, uh, little wolf packs, and then the large mouth would be singles or doubles, and they would obviously look a little bit bigger. Um, but yeah, it, that there ditch carries me all the way Long through kill. the tournament. Derek Lettman. I don't know how big it is, but it's a fish. It's not that big. Little guy. But it is number two. Number two for our day two start leader. somewhere. Small large mouth, but like you Little said. Guy. Until you have five, you don't necessarily yeah, discriminate on the yeah. size of the fish. You you want the biggest possible, but you have all day to cull those out. Derek said one key thing for him, a lot of guys like to fish fast at Hartwell. They'll cover a lot of water yeah. or they'll fish offshore and hit a lot of spots. For him, he's been making a bunch of casts on key stretches. He said, you might see me tomorrow not move my boat and make 50 casts and you think it's a replay. You think that I'm, you know, it's me yeah. just making 10 casts and uh, replaying those 10 casts, but I've made 50, 60, 70 casts on some stretches that I think and I'm convinced there are fish on, maybe a stump, maybe a maybe a rock edge, something about it, but I'll make repeated casts and pays off for Derek with a second keeper for him. When you have a three pound lead, Jason, it allows you a little bit of slack. You don't have to necessarily catch as much weight on the final day, but you don't want to give any of that. You cannot any of think that, slack that though. <laughs> you cannot think that way. I've done that too many times. Uh, you got to fish the last day like you're three pounds back, no matter how big the lead is. So we head out to Matt Pangrack. There's a lot going on, you know, with these guys. You got the classic, you got obviously winning the event. Um, yeah, there's some nerves on the last day. A 
you told me requalifying for the elites one of the hardest things you've ever done and you the never hardest. want to have to do it again the hardest the hardest it was stressful you know, yeah that year was um one of the longest years travel traveling all over you know and, and it's different fishing the opens than it is the elite series elite series we have 85 90 boats um you know you go to these opens you're fishing 200 yeah. 225 and uh, you're fishing against the best guys in the area, not to mention, you know, some of the other Elite Series guys. Well, I'm looking at the standings now. You topped Greg Hackney, both requalified senior by three points. Mm -hmm. Next guy, Kenta Kamur, was three points back. And so if you didn't finish yes. seventh. Yeah. You know, it was just. That'll play. That's nice a one. good one right there. That is a good one for Matt Pangrak. Five of those go a long way. Wow. Yeah. There's about 20 of them that size out there. That's what happens when you, I mean, he said there's 20 of more of that size. When you find, something. we'll find out here in a second. When you find a, they're usually grouped to size. I would be throwing that thing in there and, and getting back out there as quick as I could. Weigh it later. Get in the well and go. Yeah, yeah. What do you think, elite heavy three? Oh yeah. I'm gonna say 383. 330. Oh, I'm a little heavy. All right, we need four more bites today. I'm gonna say he cut a little bit off of it for it. <laughs> yeah, he's been the watching the, he's been watching the Elite Series guys too much. The camera get the angle makes it look that, bigger. I just I like it like that. So I think it's smart. I just yeah. You know, when I requalified, I had so many good breaks you know Hartwell was one of them on the spot in 27 news go sun's getting up he was on that pole he's right back at right it off that, uh, <laughs> what do you think of him he was after day one, he was uh, 98th place. He had fallen to 17th in the in the Southern Opens AOI with his fifth place points yesterday. He's going to win the Southern Open division. A couple years ago, he actually won the overall Opens after winning his first Open and then a year later winning his first Elite Series tournament. What's, inc what's incredible, Such, as you mentioned it, he's already qualified for the Elites, but he will win the Southern Opens. We'll, we'll skip him the points, for our yeah. invites to the Elite Series, but for Brian New, Jason, he's got about 575 points out of a possible 600. So out of three tournaments he's finished, he's only given 25 points back that's, to the field. That's strong. Paul Marks hooked up. There we go. That's a nice one. Mm -hmm. I still am mind blown. I'm not seeing a, a spoon go better. across a cane pile. Just goes to show it never happens the same way twice. You know, it never does. It's tight at the top, Ronnie. Every segment, the last few segments, we've seen important fish go in the live well. Matt Pangrax, solid three plus pound spot of bass. You can see how fat they get though. We thought it was almost a four pounder because they mm -hmm. just get so stout. For Matt Pangrak, we'll see that go to his bottom line in just a moment from seventh place. Probably move him up at least into the top five. Meanwhile, everyone's chasing Shane Leinberger, who landed a six-pounder earlier today. Derek Letton, our day two leader, sitting in second place. We'll be right back from Lake Hartwell. This October on Fox and FS1, the National League's biggest stars battle it out on the road to the Fall Classic. The National League Division Series begins Tuesday only on Fox and Fox Sports 1. Who you guys got for the playoffs, Such? I know you're a big Cardinals oh guy. The Braves gosh, have been man. really hot lately. The Mets, though, have been strong all season. Dodgers as well. We'll, we'll, we'll see. <laughs> Pulling for the Cardinals, they blew game one. <laughs> I just got Such in a sour mood now oh to bring up gosh. his Cardinals. It's okay. It's okay. We'll go back out to Derek Letton in our day two leader. Him and Shane Leinberger were tied on day one of this event. Letton took the outright lead yesterday, and now Leinberger with a six-pounder 
goes a long way, and he's up into the there he is. top spot. Not of the re hmm. Tiny oh. crankbait. I like the Little way he's fishing. Yeah. Yeah, say it's two, three fish. pounders. I like the way he's fishing, though. I mean, the way he's fishing, you're not going to catch, you know, five, three and a half. So you're going to catch a couple big ones. You know, maybe the big ones will show up here soon. That's, That's screaming. Throw me a buzz bait. Throw me a buzz bait. There it is, eat it. <laughs> Very cool to see somebody like letting and talk about a game plan and follow through with a 50 plus cast on a stretch of bank mm -hmm. without moving his boat. And we've, last segment, he was catching a fish without is. moving his boat. Same thing here, and Shane Lambert hooked up on top water. That'll work. Choked it. <clears throat> Choked it. That'll be number five. We're getting there. You guys are leapfrogging each other for the lead. And Lettman's keeper would have given him the lead, but Lineberger just took it right back. Telegraphed that one, didn't I? <laughs> uh oh. Line Burgers, our third angler with we a five fish Phoenix limit. logo. Line Burger throwing a double bladed buzz bait. I'm pretty sure that is the. What's that? What you mean? I'll we'll just have him tell us. Uh, the trailer? Oh, it's a True South Custom Lures. Uh, it's called a buzz frame. This thing was developed just to throw a toad on. Um, we'll get into that in just a second. We saw Matt Pangrad mm -hmm. hooked up last time we saw him catch one. It was a three plus pound spot of bass, the biggest we've seen today for that species. Mm -hmm. I thought he was a lot better, but I'll take him. And Greg had 16-4 on day one. Imagine he'd be very thrilled to make a Bassmaster Classic. Yeah. One fifty-four. Man, that deep shouldn't have been that little. Going old school on them. One sixty-three, one fifty-four, and one fish that's. He's got one of the right ones. Weight, yeah. Yeah. Here, come look at this. So this is my trail, right? So I was sitting here, this is old. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and there he is right there on the arch. There's my bait dropping down to it. I went right in the arch. There's where I hopped my bait right there. And then there's where I caught him. That's crazy. That tells the whole story right there. So, whoa, sorry. 2D is still very effective. Very relevant. Like, that fish was caught because of 2D sonar. Very, very cool visual there from Matt Pangrak as we go to Tristan McCormick, reigning college classic bracket champion from 2021. Said I won and made the classic on a pink worm and I'm gonna try to do it again this week on a pink worm.
fish so many. Took her got gouged by something. Third quarter. Pound and three quarter, one pound, 12 ounces is what that converts to and makes them probably a half pound coal at least, you know, getting rid of a one pounder. Just a seven and a half on the day or so, Ronnie. He could sneak above uh, Lineberger for the lead. Just got word from tournament director of the Opens, Hank Weldon. He was and has been the tournament director for the College Series for the last decade plus since its origination. You saw what that one does. What he said last year, this week, was when he won the College Classic bracket. So he said the first week of October does very well for Tristan McCormick. I would just say, hey, can we schedule an important <laughs> tournament every year, first week of October, right before we end the season? Can we do that? And see if it still holds yeah. true. Yeah, see if he can test his luck. Bass track, he has taken the lead, Tristan McCormick, with 37-12 estimated. through this and get to these trees. I probably should have cranked up an idle. Oh, a couple of fish have not registered yet, Ronnie, on the leaderboard. Yeah, I believe Lineberger's yeah. most recent wouldn't have registered either. So. They're going to flip-flop all day long, and I am totally cool with that because drama <laughs> at the top of the leaderboard is something that we want. It went from being three pounds when we started the day from first to second place. It is now three pounds from first to sixth place going to be tight in the leaderboard all day long. I don't even know if that reflects Matt Pangrak's most recent fish. We'll keep an eye on the leaderboard as it changes with every fish catch. Tristan McCormick and Shane Lineberg are going head to head at the top of the leaderboard. We'll be right back from Lake Hartwell. Live coverage of the St. Croix Bassmasters Southern Open at Lake Hartwell is sponsored by Minn Kota. Powerful. Skeeter Boats, and by Rapala. We're here at the Abu Garcia Bassmaster High School Combine presented by Skeeter. We've got some really cool stuff going on this week. We started this project about two years ago when the concept was here. So when we opened the doors last year, all the kids came in, they were able to meet all the coaches, the competition showed all that. It really became quite a cool event. It's been even bigger and better this year. We've spent more time planning it. You know, we kind of worked out some kinks that we may have had the first year. So now we're at 100 kids, um, which is 25% more than we had last year. You know, still 20 schools that are here. They're all offering scholarships. One of the coolest stories that we had from last year is over two and a half million dollars in scholarships were awarded directly from this event. Um, I was talking to some of the coaches earlier. He grabbed four kids from this event that all got scholarships to come to his school. And you can talk to all the schools here and they're having the same positive reactions to it all. There's a lot of schools that couldn't be here or don't offer scholarships that want to be involved. And so there is so much room for growth as we see growth, you know, in high school to college going on through up all the way to the elite series. You know, these kids are getting more engaged to this. It's more interesting to them. They're choosing their colleges that they want to go to. And it's grown so much in the last few years. And this is kind of one of those events, a lot of fun. You know, the kids, like I said, they get to work with all the colleges, get to meet the coaches, um, get an idea of what campus is like. Tomorrow we'll do a little bit more formal sit down where they can start sharing transcripts and the fishing tournament and kind of getting an idea of the individual processes. 
And then in the afternoon, we actually have the fun time, and that's the competition. And these kids are out here, and you know they're going to give it their all. We're doing a long-distance competition, an accuracy competition, and a boat driving with skills challenge type competition. So that's really the fun part. These kids, they're all super competitive. That's why they're here. They want to be the best. They want to go to the best schools. They want to win the competitions tomorrow. So it's a lot of fun. Year after year, we're going to see this kind of continue to grow and kind of see some of the kids that we met at this first event. The one, one of the kids that was at our event last year won uh, the high school national championship this year. So um, he's already got a scholarship from this event last year to go to school to do it at the next level. So it's all about kind of growing the levels. No matter how old you are, no matter your skill level, there is a bass tournament trail for Bassmaster made for you from the juniors. That's everyone below high school age to the high school series college. It's a weekend, which is the nation series. This is the opens. We have a team tournament trail as well. And then obviously the Bassmaster Elite Series, which our guest today, Jason Christie, is a multi-time champion and a classic champion on this body of water at Lake Hartwell. And Jason, Lake Hartwell is a special place, but in the fall, you were able to make a top, you were able to make a top 10 here um, in past years. What do you see different about your strategies from the spring and the pre-spawn where you can catch largemouth and spotted bass versus the fall where you can also do the same? They're just a lot more predictable in the spring. You know, they're working their way up towards the bank, getting ready to do their deal. This time of year, that's why we're seeing so many different techniques. They're scattered out from two foot of water all the way out to 30, 40. But one thing that we yeah, that's, fine. that's remained consistent is like you look at the leaderboard, you know, Hartwell, it's going to be close. You know, whenever we flash the leaderboard early, it's it, it reminded me of the classic, you know, the weights a pound or two out and everybody's a fish or two away like Lineberger caught to win this event. And now Lineberger has two of those fish. He had a five pounder on day one and he has a six pounder today. If you can catch a big one every single day, you can, it goes a long way for this tournament. As we take a aerial look of Lucas Murphy's spot where he's just filled his limit. He has five spotted bass in the boat, one solid one. Lucas Murphy, the former college angler from Grand Valley State in Michigan, now transplanted to South Carolina, just fishing a little offshore spot. Normally when the water's up about another three, four, maybe five feet, uh, that's it's not just visible. The, I think we're on the, a little knob off the east bank. side of Point. Anderson Island, and it's just a bunch of little shallow flat points. Got a bunch of rock on them, and I mean, there's typically fish on all of them, so I'm just kind of running every single one, running a milk run. I'll go to the next one, the next one, the next one. And, you know, when you pull up, like this one, I mean, there's a bunch of them. I mean, like, I don't know if you can see that screen from back there, but you can see all the blobs. And that one just was down looking at it, but didn't bite it. And I just throw at them and typically like they're gonna bite right away or they're not gonna bite. So I will leave pretty quickly once I probably throw out a few of those. Oh my gosh. <laughs> um, I've just been running these points, trying to find, trying to hopefully land on one where the bigger fish are, are feeding. Let's it's frustrating see. though. You'd almost rather not know, but you gotta have it if you're out here chasing them on these points. Live scope, that is. Yeah, when they disappear off your graph, Jason, it might be because they're on the surface about 50 feet out in front of you, <laughs> busting on bait. Yeah. And you only have, for, for fans who are like, why do they just come up for just a second? Yeah. Normally, they the best ambush point is the surface of the water. When they push that bait fish to the surface, they have nowhere else to go Golly. other than bust the surface, but you only have 10, seconds. 15 seconds to maybe yeah. get your bait there. Well, and catch about one. to come up again. Yeah. You know, I fished Hartwell February, March, April, September, and that's a rule. Like I always have a topwater bait laying there. They can come up anytime, and it takes 
it just takes one or two of those fish to change the day you know you can also i mean i call them bonus fish it wasn't supposed to happen but you know you're in the right place if you got to dig that spook out of the rod locker then you've lost that time yeah growing up in the carolinas that's i always ask my dad why in the world do you have a fluke or a spook mm -hmm. on almost all year long. It could be snowing outside and he has a top water rigged up in the box or maybe even on the front deck because some of the biggest or most aggressive fish in the lake, that's the 15 seconds of window of opportunity you need to catch them because they may not bite on the brush pile when you drop down to them. They're right. only gonna feed upwards towards the surface. Lucas Murphy trying to gauge where his school of fish may be the right five bites if you can get him to fire up to maybe win this open. As we make a move from him, we're going to go to another angler who's pretty proficient in spotted bass and brush pile fishing. That's Paul Marks from Lake Lanier, Georgia. That's the region, the country he's from, coming Georgia specifically. And Paul said, hey, I've won enough money last year at Lake Lanier to be able to fish the opens this year. And so to win today would be something incredible to make the Bassmaster Classic at 21 years old. Before the Classic, I arrived at the Classic like a week early and I went to Lanier one day and just fished because they're so similar uh, and how they set up with spotted bass. And I learned a lot there, moving up towards the classic. Mike, what type of things do you apply from a lake in the region to the fishery you're competing on? Just how they, how they were set up, you know, and, and if they would bite my little minna, you know, that I was throwing. I, I needed to know that, and I, obviously they did, and I just transferred a lot of that. Even though I only spent one day on Lanier fishing, um, you know, it gave me a lot of confidence moving into the into the week at Hartwell. Yeah, our competition's an elite in the classic. You have an off-limits period that you mm -hmm. cannot be on the water. Mm -hmm. It's usually four weeks, 28 days. Yeah. And you can't gain information from outside sources than anybody else could get. Yeah. So. And the classic's actually different. You can't be on the water, I think. From calendar January yeah, 1st. Yeah, so, um, and that's what I do. You know, the lake that I live on, there's a lot of times the lake that I live on is, it's clear on the bottom, dirty on the upper end. You can catch them deep shallow. But I try to go out before I leave at least a day or two and just remind myself, you know, fish that pattern that I think may go down uh, where we're going. And then it's all about confidence in bass fishing. You gain a little bit of confidence and then you can transfer it to another lake. Now, does it always work? No, but there's a few times that it does. Well, Brian Pollock was here last week for our college, and he kept saying there's clues you keep learning. Mm -hmm. So even a body of water next door down the way or up the river, give right. you ideas. Yeah. A little bit of a clue. And if you're fishing the Bassmaster Opens in 2023, you will also deal with a brand new off limits. We're trying to make our semi pro series as close to the Elite Series as possible. So they will have a month off limits as well, and there'll be an official practice time period the week of the event so these anglers will have to get used to that as well we go from spotted bass offshore to guys fishing largemouth up on the bank shane lineberger with his limit fish sitting in the top spot first place overall lucas murphy the last few catches for him have moved him from fourth into second tristan mccormick hanging tight Derek letting in right there in the top five as well and paul marks jumping matt pangrek into the top five we'll be right back with more from lake hartwell live Look at the size of that bat! You're watching a Fox Sports presentation of BASS. Welcome back to legendary Lake Harwell. I'll say that because Lake Harwell plays host in Anderson, South Carolina, a great tournament venue to go to, Green Pond Landing. They host every single level of Bassmaster tournaments imaginable. We've had college series, high school series events here. We've had elite series events and opens, and we've also had the biggest tournament in the sport of bass fishing, what we would call our Super Bowl of the sport, and that is the Bassmaster Classic. And today on Fox Sports 1 and Bassmaster.com, 
We have Jason Christie, our 2022 Bassmaster Classic champion. Does that ever get old getting introduced? Oh, no, <laughs> no, I love that. I love I've waited for so long for that. So we talked about it, Jason, as we bring it into the Bassmaster Studio, sponsored by Marathon. Your Bassmaster Classic victory in March. It's a little bit different. You were able to fish shallow, but you also fished in those ditches out in open water, you know, vertically fishing. Can you walk us through a couple of those baits that you were able to use in the Classic this year to win that deal? Yeah, so I was starting off in the morning, you know, doing the typical uh, Lake Hartwell uh, pattern, you know, fishing these ditches and stuff. And, this is a Yum FF Sonar Minnow, and that's what I was doing. I was using live scope. We call it the FF Sonar Minnow for forward-facing sonar minnow. I would see these fish, and I would cast to them, you know, and I would get off to a good start each day. Um, 8, 9 o'clock, 10 o'clock, I would move to the docks, and that really the jig, this War Eagle Jiu Jitsu jig, carried me through. I didn't get near as many bites on this jig as I did on the sonar minnow, but this is the one that caught a lot of the good ones. And, uh, then, and then obviously we saw you in 2020 here in the fall make the top 10. We got to do some Bassmaster Live there as well and mm -hmm. watch you fish. And you were kind of switched up totally different, but it's still in Jason Christie territory of comfortability, a top water in your hand. Yeah, and it was the same thing. I was fishing 50, 75 cane piles a day, brush piles, just moving. And what was funny is you make that cast, there'd be 20, 30 spotted bass follow it in. You know, you catch one or two, you'd have to make a round, come back, let them regroup later. But the spook was the deal for me. And, you know, Hartwell, any time of the year, these are the baits that I can always catch fish on. One thing that's interesting with those brush pile fish, we see guys fishing drop shots, all the vertical fishing mm -hmm. finesse. Those brush piles may be in 10, 15, 20 feet of water, but you're saying you can throw a top water and draw those fish up as well. So Lake Hartwell, a very dynamic body of water for all tournament fishermen. No matter if you want to fish in less than five feet of water, you want to fish out to 30 or 40 feet of water. We're seeing that today in the, in the open with the top 10 represented. We're starting to see a concentration. They're starting to group up a little bit where the rivers flip. Gonna go over towards that Andersonville Island region right there. Like you mentioned, Jason, out in front of Green Pond Landing, but right where the mouth of the Seneca River kind of connects to the main lake and the mouth of the Tougaloo River, they all kind of connect right there. And those islands have a lot of concentrations of fish all times of year. Paul Marks adding another one to his total. He's got a now Cole. If you're new to Bassmaster tournaments, five fish is your limit. That's what you want to reach every day. But once you get to five and you catch number six, you have to make a Cole, which means you throw back your smallest. Oh, and he's eyeballing there to yeah, call. He's, he's got a couple cookie cutters he's got to pick from as John Garrett. First view of him today hooks up with one. John Garrett, also a former college classic bracket champion. He's been a longtime representative in the Opens as well. He made the 2017 classic from the 2016 college series. Did that one down in Houston, Texas, Lake Conroe. Yeah, probably right at it. We're starting to hear that more and more as the years go on. Former college, former high school champion. These guys are starting early, learning a lot and then coming over to the Elite Series. Now you hear that in the Elite announcement. Yeah, Dave Mercer saying that the yeah. classic or college champion, there's more and more college guys on the Elite Series. There's a lot in our Opens vying to get there too and doing well. Matt Pengrag hooked up again. Yeah, you mentioned that. And Jason Cooper Gallant from Canada just got second in the points race, qualified for the Elite Series after yesterday's competition. <laughs> I covered him at the 2015 High School National Championship at Kentucky Lake. When he, he was one of the Canadian teams that came down to compete there. So seven years later, and you're now going to the Classic and making the Elite Series. 
I wonder what the number is of the Elite Series guys. It's uh, over a quarter. It's, it's getting closer to a third of them that have fished in college for sure. Another little pounder. You know, it's not something that we had when I was a kid. Uh, and you were too good at basketball <laughs> to, to worry about college fishing. Well, I'm kind of... I'm kind of glad no, that we didn't do have it good, but because I wouldn't have played <laughs> basketball. Oh, well, Gallant's also in the classic going to be competing against you. Yeah, next year in uh, Knoxville. And we'll see more of him on the elites. Another Canadian. I am excited to see him Come on. encroach. Maybe give some competition to the Johnstons in One sixth. at the St. Lawrence River. They always get in the top five, and now we got a third person who calls that their home body of water. Yeah, 160. It's been a uh, slow morning. There's a lot of fish that are, uh, there's a lot, I'm seeing a lot more, like a lot more of the right ones. I got one of them to bite. I got one that's uh, three and a quarter in there, which if you can average one of those every two hours, you're, you're doing it right. But, uh, as a whole, seeing a lot more fish and they're just not as uh, aggressive towards the bait. I think it's because there's a lot more of those little like thumbnail shad that are up there. And they, uh, they get so keyed in on something here, it's ridiculous. And then once they're keyed in on it, like I think it's a survival deal for them. Like they don't even know that anything else exists once they get super keyed in on something. So you have to really trigger a bite. And then of course, you know, the whole school comes like right underneath the boat after you catch one. But I'm just, making a little rotation. Haven't gotten to a lot of, I mean, I haven't even touched any of my stuff, like most of the two pound stuff, two and a half pound stuff. I just wanted to stay down lake because the further I am down lake, seems to be there's more big fish. Like we mentioned, every angler has a diverse background. Some travel the country and call themselves pros. Some are from the college series that are trying to be a pro. And Matt Pengrak, he might be trying to take my job one day as a commentator, he, or he wants to take your job. He's kind of riding the fence on being a talk show host for fishing and then also getting it done on the water this year as well. He's in all nine opens trying to make the Bassmaster Elite Series. Shane Leimerger makes a move. We go over to Lucas Murphy. Yeah, I feel like, Jason, back in the day, maybe when you fished, you fished locally, mm -hmm. you know, regionally possibly, but it's almost like your family or like your friends are like, hey, man, you should try to go be a pro. And then that's when your generation decided to go try it. Whereas these kids, like you said, they're starting so young, they're in seventh grade saying, I want to be on the Elite Series, and that's their goal. Yeah. Whereas you guys were just, you were working a job and discovered you were really good at doing this thing. And a lot of people are like, you should go give it a try in right. the next couple of years. You know, we'll make adjustments in our lifestyle, but you should do it. It's like whenever I was growing up, it really wasn't a career option. You know, you didn't see that out there now. You know, if they're in the seventh, eighth grade, fifth grade, high school, you can look at it and say, hey, I can fish high school. I can go yeah. fish in the college and then I can go regionally, you know, and, and usually those guys that have that process and gradually come up, those are the ones that make a lifelong career in bass fishing. I mean, you always have exceptions. You know, there's those few guys that just run out there and just... Could catch them almost yeah, anywhere, know yeah, what they're doing. Yeah, but day in, day out, it's the guys that, you know, start and build up, build up, gain a lot of experience on a lot of different bodies of water. Because we fish a lot of different stuff on the Elite Series. And just talk about that after our next break about how you were uh, saying I should be considered when we head to the north because you said nobody thinks about you. Yeah. Well, we'll hold you to that. Then we got three smallmouth events, one that you've won multiple times on. We'll keep an eye on Lake St. Clair for Jason Christie, but 
We're keeping an eye on Shane Leinberger and Lucas Murphy's poking his nose into second place. Like we mentioned in the last break, he's been on a school of fish. He needs a good or better than average one to maybe supersede Shane Leinberger, who is in our top spot at Lake Hartwell. We'll be right back with Bassmaster Live. Whoa! Look at the size of that bass! Live coverage of the St. Croix Bassmaster Southern Open at Lake Hartwell is presented by Mossy Oak Fishing. Welcome back to Bassmaster Live and we look at the lay of the lake there at Lake Hartwell from the northernmost point of the Seneca River to the westernmost point of the Tougaloo River all the way down to the dam. Jason Christie's probably caught them on every inch of this body of water and you get to pick your poison. Do you want to fish closer to the dam? Do you want to fish mid lake? Looking at the top 10 right there, it looks about half of them are all gathered right around that green pond, what we would consider mid lake. A couple guys have made their way up the Tougaloo River, including Brian New, who's been utilizing a jig on a lot of his docks and brush piles this week, way up the Tougaloo for 19 pounds yesterday. Biggest bag we've seen this week, 19 pounds even. People will forget Jason Christie was the tied for the day two lead at the Classic, but the day one leader just a few months ago here was Brian Newman. Caught 20 pounds on that day. I think four. Yeah. Not talking yet. <laughs> he usually has, ask him one question and he goes and goes. Mm -hmm. He's got to get his limit. I guess. No mercy. Brian New fishing in the back of a creek, fishing a dock. And Jason, you did that to perfection at the Classic, balancing the offshore to the dock bite. I rode with you on the final day of practice, and we didn't have a bite when we left your starting area for about three hours. And you pulled into a shallow pocket, and you said, I'm going to catch one fish within the next three or four docks. You caught one on every single dock. When you're a dock fisherman, they all look the same, but you know there's something a little different what are you looking for at least this time of the year for a dock because it might be a little different than in March you know this time of the year I really prefer the shallow ones it's, I feel like the mm. a lot of the bigger fish that was a nice bite we'll get up there real shallow but also you know in the fall I've, I've caught some you know on some deep brush those 20 25 foot docks I like those those shallow ones you know you can move quickly and I feel like if I get a bite it's gonna be a good one David Gaston with another great visual there. If he could just catch a six pounder like Shane Leinberger, mm -hmm. we'd be in business on Bassmaster Live. You know, and what I did with you the day that you rode with me before the classic, that was my elimination day. Mm -hmm. You know, I spent a lot of time riding around that day, um, trying to get ghosts out of my head. You know, places I caught fish in the past. You don't want to have too many ideas during the tournament day. You know, or for me, I like to have I a few like options. That. David Gaston's been seeking out these wolf packs of fish. As they pop are, look at this beautiful visual. How fast they go from under the water to boom, uh, on it. I really believe if you take somebody fishing and they get to experience that right there, they're fishermen for life. We've got some iconic topwater bites here. In past elite series events, Stetson Blaylock with a pop are pausing it, not working it nearly that fast, working it really slow and watching once come up in slow motion and eating it. And we've seen frogfish, buzzbait fish, popar fish. And we haven't even got to see yet on Bassmaster Live the, the top water for the offshore schools where you're casting in the abyss over 15, 20 feet of water like we were talking about. And they'll come from the bottom mm -hmm. straight up to the surface just to, to blow up on that top water. Like a great white. Yes. <laughs> There's some right there coming up, isn't it? No, it was the wind. You know, I've noticed uh, with live scope, a lot of that schooling actually starts down there deep. You know, you see them start moving, chasing, and then they 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 push them up and they pin them to the surface. You know, a bass wants to get their bait pinned somewhere on the bottom, on the edge of the bank, or on the top. They don't want to chase them out there 
you know, in the middle of the water column. It's like having a fence, you know, and trying to catch a cow. You don't want to catch, him, catch her in the middle of the field. You want to get her next to the fence. <laughs> I've never caught a cow before. I don't know if uh, I Oh, we have to them. catch them every now and then. <laughs> ain't hungry yet. They ate last night. They saying clear skies, big bright moon they ate last night? Mm-hmm. About as normal as it's been every day. Mother and I usually have one decent fish by now. It's a little slower, but keep on grinding. And hopefully my time will be right. I always like to be around the bank during the full moon. We'll be making a move here in a few minutes. It doesn't matter if it's January, middle of the summer, or in the fall. There's just something that happens around the bank that those fish get up there. Three days ago, that rock was eight inches under the water, right there. And if you don't know exactly what rock Derek letting in the day two leader is talking about, something we mentioned they're starting the fall drawdown sometimes these lakes and the carolinas pull down the water in anticipation of storms they expected the hurricane to drop some rain they did not get nearly as much rain in this area as they expected so the drawdown is starting and it'll get it'll normally get pretty low on this body of water some mm -hmm. of the docks will be high and dry but a rock that was under the water about half a foot maybe almost a foot just a couple days ago is now out of the water because the water's dropped about a foot since the tournament started. That's significant for a 56,000 square acre lake, yeah. the drop down. It's a lot of water moved. Yeah. You know, and drawing that down, it's gonna create some current. And that may be the reason that we're not seeing a lot of that cane pile top water thing happening because they're literally, they're setting up high. Um, just waiting for the bait to come by. You know, a lot of them may be more point oriented or uh, bridge oriented, you know, somewhere where they can set and catch them with coming to the current. And cover. My cover just happens to be docked. But I think that's the best way to catch a big bag right now. I mean, I know, I may be completely wrong, but I know what it is. And it helps a whole lot when you can skip. And I somehow forgot how to do that. I kind of grew up fishing and don't fish like it a whole lot anymore because it's typically not a player for us. Do about once a year. It takes about a week to figure out how to do it. It's right behind you. You mentioned it, Jason, that you like to fish docks this time of the year and the shallow docks here because it gives you a smaller window where you can be more efficient and quick. When you're looking at a dock, especially ones like these, you can catch them on six or seven different spots on the dock. Tell me about that from, from the bank where the walkway is all the way out, what you look to target. So what they um, do is these fish move around, you know, during the day. They may be, and you just have to fish these docks to be able to figure it out. They may get up there on the walkway, you know, early. You may be catching them and all of a sudden, uh, you know, they move out to the ends based on sun, based on clouds, based on current. You know, and I always want to circle back on some docks. If I know there's fish there and I fish through it, um, maybe that fish, maybe he swam off or those fish swam off, they're gonna come back. But, you know, the cool thing, about a dock lake is you can catch fish on docks 12 months of the year. You know, you may not be able to win on them all the time, but there's always fish that live around these docks. Brian New goes around. We had a little bit of a mic issue there, but we've got the camera mic. We'll be able to hear Brian the rest of the day. We had an issue at the last open with a microphone as well because Pete Glusek took a, took a dive into the <laughs> Chesapeake Bay on accident. We love Pete and we had to bring that up one more time. Out with our unofficial leader, Shane Leinberger, a six pounder in his live well. If you missed it earlier this morning, 
Lineberger took the lead from ninth place because of a six pound bite. Yes. Hooked up again. Small one, but may call for him. I don't think he's any help. He had two real small ones this morning as well. Tied for first on day one was 17, 13. Fell, fell off to 10 pounds, mm. 11 ounces on day two. I was trying to get the biggest bag today. Said he shouldn't have laid off him on day one if he knew day two was going to be tough, that he left them biting. And said on day two he tried to fish behind himself, tried to fish water he had fished on day one. And sometimes in the fall, they just do not replenish. Shane Leinberger had a little dip in production yesterday, but was supremely confident in this is a great pattern lake. We'll get into that when we get back from commercial break, but Lake Harwell, a great pattern lake, and he is running that pattern to perfection today in a different area on Lake Harwell. We'll be right back after commercials. Bassmaster Live. Start Saturday strong with big noon Saturday as Blake Corum and the number four Michigan Wolverines take on their electrifying show on the road to Indiana today, noon Eastern on Fox. Jason, you're in Oklahoma. You're an Oklahoma guy. Are you a Go Cowboys or Boomer Sooner? Kind I'm kind of, of a I'm kind of a bandwagon fan. I, I <laughs> root for the one that's winning uh, that particular year. Hey, that's admirable. Most people won't admit that they're a bandwagon fan. I'll take it. I know. just like a good football game. Oh, you know, nothing better hardly. Yeah. Other than a six pounder on Championship that's Saturday right. at the Bassmaster event, and that's what. Shane Leinberger has in the boat. He is in the top of the leaderboard because of that. And one of his closest pursuers, 2021 College Classic Bracket Champion, Tristan McCormick, won that very tournament last year this week on a drop shot and a pink worm, as he calls it. And he is using that same technique this week to make the top 10 at Lake Hartwell. Boy, he had a big comeback. He had a bad morning. Couldn't Double digit poundage behind. and. One by three ounces. Came on late. You got one of those good football games right now. Shane Lineberger, 41-4. To Tristan McCormick's 39. Mm. Needs a field goal here. Gosh dang it, he's taking his time. You're talking about, you know, him doing good last weekend you covered him he's back on the final day here it's just so funny in bass fishing it's like anything else you get you get that momentum going you get it in your head and uh you don't think about anything else other than what you're doing yep. confidence in yourself it'll carry you through two and a quarter maybe 190. Two and a half. Two and a half. Oh. Mm -hmm. This kid's really calm. You can't see him shaking because his hair covers up his shoulder. You know, you can't see. Yeah, he kind of here. So I've been thinking he reminded me of somebody. I kept thinking that and I kept thinking that and I finally figured out who it is. I want to know if it's somebody I'm thinking. Okay. Yeah, the last time I seen this guy, he was running through the desert. <laughs> oh. oh, oh. Does he not look like Forrest Gump a little bit? A little Forrest? Yeah, with maybe the Tom hat. Hanks yeah. in general. You know? Yeah, when yeah. he's when he's shaggy, yeah. shaggy dog. He's kind of got that castaway beard as well going on. Yeah. You know. Tristan McCormick from Bethel University, now graduated, now trying to make it as a pro, and another guy who is just very, very young. We got to see him on Bassmaster Live at our last. Bassmaster Open, and this was at the Chesapeake Bay just a few weeks ago. JT Tompkins, very, very young. He's missed out on the Elite Series bid oh my God. the last two years by less than 10 points, but this, I believe he's 20 years old. Qualified for the Bassmaster Classic via his win, a huge final day. And I believe, Such, he came from ninth place on the, the final day to win the Open. 
that is where Shane yeah, Lomberger today is from ninth place into the lead. We'll see about that. There we go. Now we go. I'm going to weigh that one just to see. JT Tompkins comes from a fishing family. Myrtle Beach, South Carolina is where he calls home. Not far from where we are Let's today. Go. Had a good event yeah. this week. Not fishing there the final go. day, though. But, man, what That's a nice. great career and a bright future he has ahead of him. Speaking of a guy kind of from a different region of the country coming to South Carolina and making it seem like home, Bryant Smith from the West Coast, from California. So he kind of lives where he can fish for clear spotted bass, and he can kind of fish grassy largemouth places as well. Just showing you a catch from moments ago. Okay. Brian Smith fishes currently in a six tournament, um, bigger tournament series, the NPFL. Mm -hmm. Traveled around and he's been getting his feet wet on the national scene there. Decided to fish the opens and has had a spectacular That's what I get for throwing southern spinning open season. He's been throwing a jig That's on his brush piles all week. Small fish in the lake. This last one came on a spinning rod and a drop shot. It takes some commitment to live in California and travel all the way out here east. Said he doesn't get to see oh his boat often because he leaves it leaves it places and flies well, home. Has to inches. borrow some buddy's boats when he's there. We have several guys in the Elite Series that do that. that. Hopefully he doesn't get lost and slide out the back of the boat. That's why you throw a spinning rod. Catch those big old 12 inch bass. As soon as weigh in <laughs> went final yesterday and Bryant Smith qualified for the Elite Series, I got a text from Luke Duncan singing his praises, saying how versatile uh, of an angler he was. And I asked him about that last night. He said, Yeah, I live not far from Sacramento, so the California Delta is a place that I fish a lot. Clear Lake's a place I also do. You have Folsom right there as well. All three very different bodies of water mm -hmm. in California more in the northern portion, but you can be about 12 hours from the lake in California and <laughs> still be in the same state. So we go out to John Garrett. Another college classic bracket champion from Bethel University. Rat City. Waiting to see John make his move. He said he's been fishing near the dam from Saddlers to the dam on the east side of the lake for most of the week, but today he was going to switch it up and work his way down. So he's been in that mid lake, the Andersonville Island region, all morning. And he said that the turnover, something that happens every fall, started a little earlier with the hurricane force winds that kind of came through and churned it up a little bit. Hmm. Can you explain for people who don't know about the fall turnover what that means to a body of water? Well, what usually happens is, you know, you have that real cold water and the real hot water, you know, the hot water's above it in the summertime. It gets to a big a point where it flip flops and, you know, the water will get dirtier. And typically what I like to do when that happens is, is go shallow. You know, it just, the deep fish kind of get messed up a little bit, but I'll get up there on the bank, cover a lot of water. Uh, though that seems to be the best way to catch it. But what a lot of people don't realize is it happens at different sections of the lake at different times. So they may be turning over at the dam and you may have good water up north. So, um, and especially on a lake as big as Harwell. That's what John Garrett said. He said people had been, had murmurings and, and rumblings of a turnover starting and he had been so far south that he hadn't seen that water. And when you say dirtier water, it's not like a mud no. or brown. It is like a, it's Coffee. like a, yeah, yeah, it's, yeah like it's like a sweet tea yeah. or a tannic water in Florida. Like it just kind of gets real dark. Yeah. And he said it finally hit down towards the dam, you know, at some point over the last day and a half. And he started to see that change. And it's not just temperature with warm water and cold water and they flip, but it's 
the oxygen levels in that cooler water. That's why fish often go shallow. Right. When you see that flip flop, now the most oxygenated water is up shallow, but it's not a quick. They're not gonna just one day be 20 feet deep, the next day be a foot. It's, a, it's about a week process that they start to make that migration. Maybe a pound. I put 12 ounces on those. Garrett's our sixth angler with a limit. Very small today. Five and a quarter for his five fish. Coming in today in 10th place, he said, I really don't know how to swing for the fences here. I'm going to just continue to do what I've done. I know that people have given up big leads. You know, a lot of guys make unnecessary adjustments on the final days of these events thinking they have to make up weight where if they just stick with a spotted bass pattern and can be consistent, they can maybe make up weight as they go along because some of these guys' patterns will fizzle out after three days. Of course, I'm partial, but I really like what Brian is doing. I mean, it can happen on back-to-back -back docks, you know, a couple of big ones. I wonder if that's exactly what he did to accumulate 19 pounds yeah. yesterday. Yes. Fished around docks and the brush piles near those docks way up in the Tougaloo yesterday. Able to catch 19. Said I made the mistake and I got, I got excited and wanted to go down and join the circus. But he said he got locked out, didn't get a ticket, didn't get to fish any of the spots. He got plenty cotton candy do up it. there yeah. though, Ronnie. He did. He said, but I went to the fair and it was real fair for me yesterday. <laughs> that is a quote unquote for him. But Shane Leinberger holding steady in the top with a two pound lead right now. Tristan McCormick in second, Lucas Murphy in third, Paul Marks and Derek Letton in round out our top five. We'll be right back from Lake Hartwell. Whoa! Look at the size of that bat! You're watching a Fox Sports presentation of BASS. I bet that's a seven pounder. If you missed it this morning, a game changer comes in many shapes and sizes, but for Shane Leinberger, it was in the size of a six pound largemouth at Lake Hartwell, pushing him from ninth oh place into God. the top spot. <laughs> yes, there's old Jojo, huh? Come on with it. <laughs> God, look at that. He went on to say if that doesn't get you excited on FS1 this morning. I don't know what will, but for a bass fisherman, Jason Christie, that is a dream catch on the final day of an event when the weights are close and you're only two, three, four pounds behind the lead, a six pounder that goes a long way and that's why he's in the top spot. Yeah, that's you want magic to happen on the last day and a six pounder is definitely magic. That's gonna give him, you know, a legit chance. He catches another three, four pounder. He might be. Yeah, he started about cool. five pounds out of the lead. He's got 12-12, our big bag of the day so far. He's on top of our leaderboard. And 41 and a quarter. For Lineberger, it also, it adds weight. It's a huge fish, one of the biggest of the week. But also, tell me, Jason, for the guys who are fishing shallow, you kind of have a time in your head. Mm -hmm. I hope to get one bite every hour and maybe have seven, eight bites throughout the rest of the day. You catch a six pounder in the first hour and a half of the day, that kind of opens your clock yeah. a window. You're, you're not pressing as much. Yeah. You got plenty of time to go call others out. Yeah, that puts you ahead of schedule. It, it gives you confidence. You know, when you're running the bank, there's a lot of dead time between fish catches. Oh my gosh. You know, it, there can be. You catch a six pounder, it, gained, it gives you confidence. <laughs> Reeling it in, ate it off the surface. <laughs> doing what you're doing. What in the world? That's what I got to do. Okay, I got it. Furry bait out there. Let it hit the bottom, let them go down on it, look at it. And then reel it up to the surface and pause it. And then eat it off the surface. <laughs> that almost tells me that that fish could have been caught on a topwater bait. Yeah, yeah. Like a little bit Something of a breeze now. Sometimes. They're getting active. They didn't want to bite it on the bottom. They're going to chase it. One thing I like about a topwater uh, is you don't catch that many little ones. You know what I mean? You may not catch as many fish, but what you catch usually is bigger, in my opinion. And it's a different way of working a topwater up on the shoreline if it's a walking topwater like the Popar, where it's slow twitches and, and chugs. For a topwater spook like you have on the desk here, when you're out there, I mean, 
tell us how you work that one because it's a little bit different probably. Yeah, and fast. I mean, it seems like speed kills. The faster I work it, the more they want it. It just lets me fish a lot faster, you know, from pile to pile. And, you know, one thing that's always kind of aggravated me over the years is these guys sit here that's not fishing telling me how to do my job. And I'm sitting I'm sorry. here, <laughs> I'm, I'm sitting here <laughs> saying how these guys should be doing it. I'm not there. I wish I was there fishing. Uh, you know, I'm sure these guys have tried that, but uh, it's something that's worked for me a lot on these kind of, you know, blueback herring, spotted bass lakes. In the fall, I mean, there's a lot of factors that are telling me uh, spook. But like you mentioned, the turnover, you probably got some watercolor there where they're not, they can't see it down there. 10, 15, that's good, 20 yeah. foot deep, so. John Garrett with another fish. He did start slow, first hour and a half or so, nothing for John Garrett, but the last hour or so, you said it was a small limit, but it is yeah. a quick limit for, for John Garrett, and that's his best of the day, it looked like. Paul Marsh hooked up. Maybe help. Maybe. And Marks knows all the spotted bass secrets. If you fish at Lake Lanier or Lake Hartwell 24-7, 365, you're going to know how to twitch your worm just a little different yeah. when it's this condition or that condition. We may see Paul pull out some blueback herring secrets, which is the bait fish that they predominantly feed on offshore here. He started day six. He's uh, about 10 pounds now in the third place. Right behind that guy, Tristan McCormick. I just saw Brian Smith, and he's one of the three from the Southern Opens here to qualify for the Elite Series next year, Mr. Jason Christie. What, what, what's your take sure. on bass's change that you have? Next year, you're going to need to fish all nine Opens in our Elite Qualifying. They're calling it the EQ. You know, um, I'll just say this. If I'm a guy that wants to fish on the Elite Series, I want to fish as many tournaments as I can to qualify. You know, Larry Nixon 15 years ago told me, you, you take a guy that, that can catch bass, the more days you have on the water, the better you're going to do. Um, you know, to fish the Elite Series takes, it's a huge commitment. You're gone a lot, you're gone from your family. Um, and I just feel like if I want to qualify, I want my I want points over nine events. You know, say you have one event that's not great. It's easier to make that up in nine events than it is. And also, it prepares you for what's about to happen. You know, you get there uh, to the Elite Series, we're gone a lot. So I, I really like the idea that you qualify for nine. And, you know, I've got some friends out there that fish the Opens that's been trying to make it. And uh, they, they're excited too, you know, because they're trying to make it in three and you have one bad day and you're out of it. You have one bad hour. Yes. It's not even like a bad day of competition yes. anymore. If you just, if you're in the wrong area of the lake for an hour, you can end up. Yeah, so if I'm a guy that's, you know, next year wanting to make it, that's a nice one. That's a real good one. This kid does not get excited. A lot of the young guys are have fished yeah. to college and maybe even came up through high school that's even keeled. Yeah. When he gets zoned in and he's, kind of gets that real serious killer mentality. Mm -hmm. Man on a mission. He knows, oh, that's a recipe. That's one more, you know. You know, going back to the nine events is, is we fish a variety. You know, we start in the south. We fish uh, in the central. We go north. And, There's you know, spot. Yeah. to qualify on three events, you may just be in a region. Mm-hmm, they're beautiful. Plus, I've always equated it to a guy's a hammer on his lake. Mm -hmm. He expands, he's good at the lakes around his where he lives. He expands that a little bit more, he's in the it's several crazy. states, he's pretty there good. Go. You gotta be able to go around the country when you're fishing the elites. Lucas, Mur Lucas Murphy hooked up. I think you, I don't want to be incorrect, but I think one of the years that you decided to, to move on to the national scene, you won all five events in a BFL division or you won like five major tournaments in your area that year yeah so I was you know I was teaching I was coaching and I was getting a check in the mail every month not a very big check but I was there was some security there 
And I had a, you know, a big year around the house, my dad, my uncle and I, and some BFLs, and I had a little oh, nest egg, and I, you know, I sat down and talked to my family and, and decided that, hey, if I'm gonna do it, this is the perfect time to do it. And, um, you know, it worked out, it was a great decision. But, you know, there was a lot of planning that went on. Um, and yeah, it's, there's just so much that a guy has to do to be able uh, to fish the Elite Series. You were coaching college basketball? No, high school. Uh, school yeah, yeah. Did you actually, you 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 told, I think you told me you won so many state championships you got tired of winning. You knew no, that you were no, done. No, no, that was not the case. That was not the case. <laughs> You're coaching Pin the Chicken at yeah. this time? Yeah. Okay, we may get into that. Yeah. Technique. Well, I, yeah, I, had, I, was, I made it fun. I think, I hope I made it fun for the kids. Lucas Murphy with another, that was, hey, we've seen two of our best spotted bass of the day, two, two of the four best spotted bass in the last two fish for Lucas Murphy and Tristan McCormick. Hey, McCormick is one ounce on bass track ahead of Shane Leinberger right now with that last fish. So you're saying there's too close to call. It's too close to call, Ronnie, yes. We're you, not gonna say the T it. word just yet. We still have half a day no, of fishing no. to go for these anglers. They are, you know, they left the dock at, 7 Eastern time and it is 1030. They've got about half of their day left before they have to check back in. And like you said, Such, the lead has gone for Shane Leinberger. That two pound advantage is mm -hmm. no more. Tristan McCormick with that latest coal about an ounce ahead. Paul Marks inching up as well. Lucas Murphy with that fish. He'll inch up even closer as well. We'll see more leaderboard changes when we come back. This October on Fox and FS1, the National League's biggest stars battle it out on the road to the Fall Classic. The National League Division Series begins Tuesday only on Fox and Fox Sports 1. It is the best time of the year for sports. Football season, basketball season, baseball playoffs, all of the things going on at the same time, and the culmination of the Bassmaster yeah, Tournament season. Get the last few events of the year, qualifying spots for the Elite Series, and to the Bassmaster Classic, and this is the last event of the fall for the Southern Opens here at Lake Hartwell. Got a star-studded top 10, so many regional pros, national pros, and college anglers looking to become pros. And they're all duking it out on a tight leaderboard. We've seen six pounders today really make a big difference for some anglers. We've seen heavy three pound spotted bass, which when it comes to consistency, that's where it is. Spotted bass yes. this week and a bigger than average can help a guy like Matt Pangrak maybe make up the deficit. Maybe a little bit of Tristan McCormick as well. We saw this six pounder from Shane Leinberger this morning, moved him from ninth place into the top spot. If you lose hope or you don't have much hope going in the final day, just know a bite like that, that'll, that'll be a punch in the arm for you and the hope of maybe taking home the title today as we go out to the guy who just took our unofficial lead the last commercial break Tristan McCormick formerly of Bethel University now one of the best young stars in the game thank you well we fished around a ramp this morning I was trying to wait for the wind to pick up before <clears throat> we ran down here to my primary area around the dam and we just rolled up to the first place and caught a three and a half so I mean that's that's what I'm looking for I mean they're out here I'm seeing a bunch of them more than I did yesterday when I was down here so this ain't even my bet I didn't even fish this yesterday so I mean I just rolled around here and there's a bunch of them up there but it's just you still got to throw at so many of them to get them to bite but if I can throw it enough at them and they be three pounders, we'll be fine. In my opinion, the biggest fish live in the lake are right here where I'm at. There's one going down to me right here. Yeah, we're just gonna keep chunking around and looking. Been jumping around too much. I really just need to put the trolling motor down in the areas I know they live in and just try to work for them.
Top weight is 41.5. Tristan McCormick. 2020, Patrick Walters won the Open here. I've heard that 44. name before. You have you? Yeah. He's pretty good. He won that with 44 pounds, 5 ounces. You were seventh with 39.8. Yeah. Some other big names were in that top ten. Did you hear that? Mm -mm. One of the four guys said, I need a Jason Christie bass. That's what I need. Really? <laughs> it can happen. Any cast. And that's Lucas not Murphy's it. been Only catching. One. It's weird. They're sitting on a stump. The most numbers tight. we've seen today. If you throw well. at the stump and land on the stump, they'll bite it. But once they... Oh, I'm oh, sorry, pal. You know, you spoke earlier about once the last... Off of it. You know, the last few fish. We've seen some of the better spots that we've seen. That sun's getting up there. You know, and... It's full moon, getting close to the full moon. These fish moving around at night, early in the morning. I would guess that, you know, this midday is going to be when we're going to see some of the better fish that we'll see all day. We caught a couple three pounders here in practice. We'll see if they bite. I wonder if he's fishing the trees or if he's fishing Look brush. Look at my head clear anyway. That's about it. Is he throwing at the bank? He said yesterday. They've been out on the ledge, but they're up there right now. Yeah, he said. There's a bunch of timber right here. Deeper than it drops into 70 feet. foot of water in just an instant. But look at them all. Look at them all down there. They're all down. There's a slew of them. Probably all about that size, but. See, you don't need six pound test line to fish for these stupid things. 20 pound test. Don't matter. You're fishing against something that has a brain of the size of a pea. He was right behind you, Derek, in 2020, yeah. open here. Really? Yep, ninth place. You missed it. Brandon Cobb was tenth. Scotty Martin was fifth. Mm -hmm. That year was different. Like I honestly fished two days fishing for largemouth and uh, never caught one. And I, I really wasn't on a lot. I think the day one leader had 20 pounds. Cody Hunter. Yeah. And he uh, caught like three fish the next day, and it was just do or die. If you went and fished for largemouth. Everyone knew that your gravestone would be finished up that week. You weren't you weren't gonna be able to make it all three days fishing yeah. largemouth. Yeah. And Derek Lettinen, not saying he he won't. He just wants to go clear his head and do this. But nine largemouth, one spotted yeah, bass, specifically well. fishing for largemouth this week. And I asked him. I always ask that. I'm not being pessimistic, be but if sure. it doesn't go to plan, sure. are we gonna see you do something different? He said, yeah, No, I'm gonna do what I'm gonna do. And we see yeah, halfway through the day. Gotta make an adjustment. Yeah, three fish, he's four pounds, two ounces back of the lead. I mean, yeah, yeah but you're. on a half ounce head on 20 pound test and smoking them. You can start to judge yourself based on your other previous days. If if you were at a certain weight mark, you know, Shane Leinberger said at 8.15 on day one, he had 14 pounds. In 30 minutes, he had 14 pounds. Yesterday, he was praying for 14 pounds and loses the one bite that would have maybe got him there. And so there's a lot of. A lot of back and forth in your brain, and, and Jason knows it better than anyone, just that mental aspect of all 10 of these guys can catch them, but the thing that separates them on making the Elite Series or taking their game to the next level is what goes on between your temples mm -hmm. during a tournament day. Yeah. You know, and that's a question I get asked a lot. You know, when do you stick with your guns and when do you abandon ship? And there's just not, I don't know the answer to that. It's a, it's a gut feeling, uh, you know, and People that follow me know that I'm pretty stubborn and I tend to <laughs> stick with my guns a lot, but um, there's just not a right or wrong answer. It's just that gut feeling, what you have the most confidence doing uh, at that time. And, you know, my guess is, you know, Derek lost some, he's lost some confidence fishing up there on the bank. So he's going to try something different and, uh, you know, see if he can figure out a way to catch some fish. And one thing that we'll mention is that there are all, always windows of opportunity. We normally think about the first hour or two of the day to catch some fish, numbers or a big one. Then there'll be a midday lull and then we'll see an afternoon bite. And we mentioned it, 1130 to 2 o'clock. 
1130 to 2 o'clock has been Derek's biggest time of day. So it's 1045, 1047 Eastern time. He's Plenty almost time. to that window. I mean, but he's able to, during this lull, maybe in his area, able to go do something different. If he catches a fish, it might be a bonus one. I'm trying to point out that when you won March 6th, it's 54 pounds even. Yeah. I mean, here we were looking at 44 again, 10 pounds less yeah. in the fall. Yeah, the difference is a lot of these large mouths back then were heavy, you know. We're, they're they're kind of skinny right now. One fat fish, whether it's a largemouth or a spotted bass, can go a long ways today as we see the leaderboard. It was a three pound lead from first to second coming into the day, two pounds from second to tenth, and now we see, let's just see, within, within three pounds or so of the lead, we've got about five or six anglers that are gonna be duking it out within that range. We'll see if any more can jump up there. Maybe Matt Pangrak, David Gaston, if his wolf pack bite picks up, We'll keep an eye on that, but for right now, Tristan McCormick leads the field at Lake Hartwell. Live coverage of the St. Croix Bassmaster Southern Open at Lake Hartwell is sponsored by Ranger Boats, Yamaha, Toyota, Berkeley, and by Progressive. Welcome back to Lake Hartwell. The midday portion, kind of directly in the middle of their competition day. They've had almost four hours to fish this morning. They'll have about four more the rest of the day. This isn't just a two and a half hour competition. This is an eight hour gauntlet, three days of competition here. You've got multiple days of practice. Sometimes it's 70 degrees, sometimes it's 100 degrees. But this week, the anglers have battled through 200 plus competitors to get to the top 10 and someone looking for a Bassmaster Classic berth and opens win and a $40,000 payday today. They can get it done and be in our top 10. Have a shot to win this event. Paul Marks from Lake Lanier, just south of Lake Hartwell. He knows spotted bass well. All of Paul's today have had a little bit of a gut on them. Not the biggest guts we've seen on spotted bass today. We saw Matt Pangrak and Tristan McCormick both catch a good fish. They all just seem real consistent in size. If Paul can catch one of those above average, you know, three to three and a half pound spotted bass, he could be in a good position. Trailing just by a few pounds coming into the, coming into the day. We mentioned it, not only classic spots up for bids, but today in this event makes it final for our Bassmaster Elite Series qualifiers. Three anglers moving on from the opens to the pros. They'll face Jason Christie next year 10 times if they make the Bassmaster Classic as well. But congratulations to Bryant Smith. He's fishing today in our top 10. Cooper Gallant from Canada. Joey Safuentes. Not from another country, but from Arkansas. So basically another country, but we got three really unique guys. One from California, one from Canada, and one from Arkansas, all making it in the Southern Open Division, which features Florida, Tennessee, and South Carolina. Speak to that, Jason. You got to travel nationally, yeah. but to have three parts of the this North America represented yeah. is impressive. Yeah, that's a really diverse crew <laughs> right there. Cooper Gallant, like we mentioned, fished the high school series in 2015. I remember shaking his hand and didn't know what half of the words he was saying because his Canadian accent was a little thicker back <laughs> in the day. But he has traveled the country and has done very well. He may double qualify at the final event of the season and bump down the spot for one more angler. But we go out to John Garrett, another one of our young anglers. He's now one of the most seasoned anglers as well, fishing in his fourth or fifth year on the Bassmaster Opens. He's been close to winning opens. He's been close to qualifying for the Elite Series. And every year, like we said, Jason, 
get one bad day, you get one yeah. bad hour, it just doesn't work out just by a few points. Yeah, to make it through the opens, you have to have, I mean, it's, it's so hard. Uh, you just can't have that, like you said, bad hour. Yeah, two of those guys are in the classic. Casey's, nope, nope. Cooper Gallant won Cherokee Lake. Yes, that was a two-day shortened event because of a major wind on day one of that event. Turned into a two-day tournament, and Cooper Gallant won. Joey Safuentes was close to winning at the Kissimmee chain earlier this year. He was day one and day two leader, and Brandon Lester Brandon snuck Lester. up and got his first victory. What's that do for an angler? Just Well, Brandon Lester's not on camera today, but he's an Elite Series champion now. He started the year off with a win at the Opens. A guy who hadn't won a major tournament yet goes and wins multiple in a season, and boom, almost wins Angler of the Year as well. I think it's, um, you know, you, you get close, you get close, and all of a sudden, whenever you win one, even if it's a, at the Open level, you believe in yourself that you can do it. Uh, you know, you just gain that momentum that I talk about, confidence in yourself. And, uh, you know, Brandon's been a great fisherman. I mean, for as long as I can remember, he was always knocking on the door. And, and that one time that you knock and it opens, you just, you realize, hey, I can do this. And uh, you tend to make better decisions when it gets down to the wire. Uh, he's gonna win a lot more events, in my uh, opinion. Yeah, we took him off our list of best and ever win. Yeah. They talk about you. When you had that little stretch here, you, you, you told me you should have tin cup painted on your thing because you go for it. You win the yep. Classic at Hartwell here in March, then you finish second to last in the yeah. next event, but then you win the following event. Yeah, you know, I no excuses, but there was a lot going on at uh, Santee, and that's, an, that's a lake that at, uh, I, I've never been to until this year, and I really, really wanted to go because it sets up for the way I like to fish. And then I go there and finish second from last. I was asked last night driving to, to the studio, what lake am I looking forward to most next year? Santee, Santee without Cook. a doubt, because I owe that lake. Or a you're punch blowing in the, the dam up or that's, something. That's, Some more like redemption yeah. because in the classic at Hartwell, you had finished, yeah, yeah, one fish short, 18 ounces short of winning classic. All it Years takes ago, is, uh, you can't win the Classic until you're in the Classic, and someone out of this top 10 will make the Bassmaster Classic today. Most of them for the first I'm time in their career. We've had a great morning of fishing here at Lake Hartwell. A couple key influential fish, some real big consistency out of guys like Tristan McCormick. We'll see if he can maintain and maybe catch a bigger than average fish. Brian New had a huge bag yesterday. David Gaston. And I'm envious of the way he is fishing today. Shane Leinberger, a six pounder for him as well. Huge fish coming across the scales for Lake Hartwell today. You yes. won't want to miss it. Matt Pangrak with a big spot of bass this morning. Those are the kind that go a long way to the tournament standings, especially if you can be consistent. We will see it all go down. Jason Christie, appreciate you joining oh us on God. Bassmaster Live on Fox Sports <laughs> 1 this morning. We will hang around and continue yes. to show you live Black bass fishing on Bassmaster.com throughout the rest of today. If you're going to join us, we will take you to weigh in as well later today. But like we mentioned at Bassmaster.com, you can check out the rest of the tournament action. If this is the last time we see you today, thank you for joining us Saturday morning on Fox Sports 1 Bassmaster Live. At Lake Hartwell, we'll see you at the next one in just a few weeks at Sam Rayburn Reservoir. Live coverage of the St. Croix Bassmaster Southern Open at Lake Hartwell is sponsored by Humminbird, Mercury, Nitro Boats, and by Bass Pro Shops. Past the midway point of the final day here at the St. Croix Bassmaster Southern Open on Lake Hartwell. Anderson, South Carolina, what a great place to be. If you've never been to Lake Hartwell, really just pick a month, whatever month you want, and it's gonna be great fishing. A lot of options and diversity, and as we are halfway through our final day of competition, we've got some changes on the leaderboard. Derek Lettinen, guy who had a day two lead of about three pounds, has fallen to sixth place. Meanwhile, Tristan McCormick, the second place angler, is in the lead. 
Shane Leinberger from ninth place up into second. Matt Pengrak from eighth into third. And Lucas Murphy staying status quo in fourth place. Been a fun and interesting Lake Hartwell event as we welcome you into the Bassmaster Studio sponsored by Marathon. Ronnie Moore here with Mike Sukon and our guest today, Jason Christie, the 2022 Bassmaster Classic Champion, 2022 Elite Series Champion, like five, six, <laughs> eight time Bassmaster winner, whatever it is, one of the best anglers we could have for today's live show. And Jason, Lake Hartwell's a fun place. You love it and you've done well in the fall also. What have you seen today that's kind of caught your eye? Um, a lot of guys on the bank. I'm surprised there's, there's, it's going down on the bank more than I thought it'd be. I thought it'd be a cane pile topwater deal. Um, I really think this next three or four hours is going to be the deal. Somebody's going to catch another one of those four or five pounders and, and separate themselves. But one thing about Hartwell is those weights are tight. You know, it's one bite, two bites is going to put somebody out in front. We've seen Such a six pounder today from Shane Leinberger, but I want to tell you, I want to ask you, this is an important day because we only have six more Bassmaster Classic berths to give away this year. We've got two opens, a team champion, and three nation guys. Every single person today in the top ten can get someone in the Classic, either themselves or maybe Brian New wins. Hunter Shryock will make it in. Yeah, Hunter Shryock was the one who entered this event to give himself a shot. If he wins, and nobody else gets a classic berth. It goes down to him on the elite standings. Yeah, Brian New could help out Hunter Schrock there. Otherwise, everyone fishing in the top 10, which normally when you get to South Carolina, it's normally a local cherry picker here or there will get in and give a spot back to the elites. But everyone in today's competition fished the entire Southern Opens with that desire of making the 2023 Bassmaster Classic right there in Knoxville. It's going to be a great one. We set records every year we come here. To Lake Hartwell when it comes to fandom because South Carolina and this region is just a fishing community. We've seen this great body of water produce some fish and Jason the maps kind of getting spread out again at the midday portion guys have got their limits now they're making some moves we see Tristan McCormick down the lake a little bit more around the Saddlers region of Lake Hartwell. Yeah this morning early they were they were kind of spread out and then they grouped up kind of in the well, center of the lake. Another three pounder. And now they're um, they're all spread out again. I don't know if y'all seen it. Y'all might have been on break, but I lost a three two right at the boat. I grabbed I had her grabbed and this this came off, just popped off. I missed her. But hey, it's you know it's part of fishing. It feels easy. Everybody would do it. You know, I've already forgot about it. I'm not worried about it. Um I'm not catching a bunch, but I got five little shoals right here down by the dam. That's my key, key area. And I don't know, I just didn't, I didn't feel good yesterday about it. And so I went and ran new water. I mean, I can go hop scotch around some points here and there and catch some, but I think for the rest of the day, I'm gonna bunker down in these four little stretches right here. And cause there, I'm seeing a lot of fish and a lot of big ones, so. I've had several three plus pounders come down and look at my stuff and just need a couple more bites. We're going to keep blugging away, keep looking around, keep the trawl motor down and throw it as many as we can before three o'clock. He's tied for the big bag of the day, 12 pounds, 12 ounces on Bass Track. Shane Leinberger, who's a pound 11 behind him, has that six pounder in the exact same total weight, 12-12. That shows you the consistency you can have with smallmouth, or not smallmouth, spotted bass this week. He has 12, 12, doesn't have an overly big one, just a bunch of, you know, three pounders is his biggest. Whereas somebody fishing for largemouth, they have kind of a Florida limit. They've got four that are a pound and a <laughs> mm -hmm. pound, a pound and a half, and a six pounder. That goes a long way, but man, you can still weigh in pound, a pound and a half largemouth if you're, if you're not too careful. Uh, whereas Tristan McCormick's already um, upgraded to where his, his floor is, is pretty high. Yeah. That's typical Hartwell. I mean, you always have that choice to go fish for the more consistent spotted bass or, you know, kind of take that risk on largemouth. Like uh, we, we talked about early, largemouth, I think, is just, somebody's going to have those started, to win. They've been reacting to, the, to everything all day, but they haven't been eating it. Like they've been doing everything but eat it. Swim around it, swim up to it, swim down to it. Uh, tap it, follow it, and I just got on one little point. I mean, I caught a couple in the tournament on it, but there was a school that stayed and caught a 250, 52 and a half out of it, and then another one that culled. Um, but 
totally my fault. I did not retie my leader, and I don't think it was even a big fish or anything, but I mean, it was a fish and I broke it off and I, I, they don't like that. Especially if it's got a drop shot hanging out of its mouth and it's swimming around, something's up. So there's a big piece of cane off at the end here. And I'm almost positive that that entire school went out to the cane to have like a city council meeting about what happened. But there's some individuals around here. I don't know if, if it was a lake wide thing. I don't know if it's this area. Like I don't, I don't feel like this is a particularly fantastic. I mean, it's a good spot. I mean, you got, you know, deep water right here, channel, but I, I kind of want to know if they've turned on on the rest of the lake and go down because I, I mean, I need a, a couple four pounders. But to get a couple that goes with what I've got is. It's just so weird how they all, they all behave differently. Uh, And for the guys that say just because you have forward-facing sonar means you're going to catch them, the guys who catch them are the ones who understand fish behavior. They understand what that means, how to fish it, what changes need to be made. You know, I've rotated through three or four different types of worms, put a spy bait on. Um, but there is something that if I could have triggered those fish before, I'd be having a, you know, a, a really, really good day. But we still got time. The, the afternoon has sucked. Uh, up until about three o'clock and we weigh in at three so the weird thing was in practice I thought it was probably my best time of the day so maybe today something will happen in the afternoon um, I need three or four more good ones what he means is he needs okay. a couple big ones to have a chance to win <laughs> Yeah, he's got a three, four, and a two and a half, and everything else for him is under two pounds, which makes sense why he's got a little bit of a deficit there to Tristan McCormick because Tristan's smallest. He's got a three and a half, a three and a quarter, a two and a half, and then two that are one and three quarters. So he's almost up to that. And if you're if you're fishing exclusively for spotted bass, that's kind of the mark that you want. You're allowed to you're allowed to have a big one if you can get one, but your floor needs to be two pounds. Your mm. smallest of the day you weigh in has to be two pounds if you want a chance to to beat out a guy who has a, a capability of a six pounder for a largemouth. They're, they're six pound spotted bass, but man, that's a fish of a lifetime, not a right. fish of a weekend. Yeah, leading up, to, uh, our top 10 had a lot of bags in the uh, teen range. Nobody's hit that point yet today. Yeah. Lucas Murphy, another guy making a charge today and staying really consistent in the top four coming into today staying in that spot and he's had a two-pronged approach for these schools of spotted bass offshore he's been throwing a drop shot some with a you know a morning dawn flavored uh, striking filler worm and some other finesse worms and then also has been using a striking caffeine shad and you can see that when he picks it up the way he moves that you know that soft plastic jerk bait as quick as he can that's what's also been enticing some fish to come up off the brush and come up and chase uh, visually above them. for another one going to two box with Tristan McCormick two of our top four right now both college series anglers one from Bethel University just graduated last year Tristan McCormick and I believe graduated last year maybe the year before Lucas Murphy from Grand Valley <coughs> State both of these guys have major victories and so it was a week a year ago this week McCormick won yes. a college bracket yep. to get to the he's hooked up again McCormick's smallest is a pound and three quarters or one pound, 12 ounces. 
see if this one will call for him. If, it's, if so, it'll push his lead closer to two pounds over the rest of the field. I think we're stuck. Yeah, I, I know I can hear the I can hear the sound of the line. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Oh, Look. Little uh, interruption never hurt the size of the no. fish though. Still no. a good one for Run him. Away. And you can see how fat that right. spotted bass is. It's small, but it's very fat. He said down here near the dam. I oh, know. What do we got? Five guys right now that's a, a legitimate big fish away from, I mean, even Shane Limeburger, I mean, with the six pounder. He catches another big one. He's good. Tristan catches a big one. You know, there's. And Greg. Yeah. Mur I mean, like. Murphy. We have seven guys. The leader. Seven guys Lexington. within 413. So, honestly, if John Garrett, who's 413 back, got 15 pounds, he's, he's yeah. right there. And that's nothing too crazy. If that calls for Tristan McCormick. Increases lead just a couple ounces. It looks like it's now clicked into Bass Track. About a three ounce call, which means he's smallest is a pound and three quarters, and his next to smallest is almost two even. So Derek back up on the bank, the day two leader, Derek letting in. Only one without a limit still. He won with he won a tournament on Sunday before official practice started. On Hartwell, very, very, very tough. 20 pounds just on Sunday. Just like Derek always. Hmm. It's been slow. I've been trying a few different things though. See if they get the, see if I can get a few fish. But I'm going to my prime areas here in a minute, and we'll see how it pans out. Hopefully it does. Because if it don't, we might be struggling. But other than that, still having a good time. I wish I had a crappy rod. I'd catch crappy. Derek live on the right and some of his fish catches from this morning. Look at that wad of them right there. Been going back and forth between a crankbait and a jig. He has extreme amount of confidence and patience. He said on the phone last night, some of those guys on a, on a corner, you know, a riprap corner oh, leading by moving. a bridge, might cast that at five, six times. He said, I'll cast that at the corner of a bridge a hundred yeah. times if I think there's a fish there, just because I know at Hartwell, they can swim in with a packet at any point there. And I don't want to be fishing just in front of them mm -hmm. and never really connect with them. He's got way more patience than I do. Yeah, I was going to ask if you have ever yeah. cast it 100 times yeah. at one My particular My philosophy spot. is to fish 25 of those corners and make four casts as opposed to selling <laughs> the same one. But he's leading the event, so who can argue with him? It's the one thing in bass fishing. There's no, no. definite. Nope, there's what worked not. yesterday might not work today. If you were a hero yesterday, you could zero today and vice versa. That's probably why it has so many people <laughs> hung up and addicted to it. <laughs> oh, crap, I just screwed that up. Gosh dang it. I didn't think he saw it. Four box with McCormick, Brian New, Matt Pangrak, and John Garrett. I don't know how old Pangrak is, maybe 32, 33 tops, something like that, but four anglers under the age of 33, it's hard to get better for on a random four box than that. Mm -hmm. Garrett had a recent call, got him over 10 pounds, 10 and a quarter. He started 10th and now he's up in seventh. He's still only 413 out of the leading weight. Still wide open. The last minute in a bass tournament is just as good as the first minute. So. Well, right now we're about to move. <laughs> I'm just kidding. 
Um, started off slow, it's still pretty slow. I'm just trying to cover a lot of water, find some active fish because the stuff I was on past two days is pretty dried up. <clears throat> and I gotta find some big ones if I wanna make a run at, at anything really. So <clears throat> that's what we're trying to do is find some active big fish. So I'm gonna stay on the move till I find some hopefully. I have a question for you. Uh oh. I don't get to sit in this chair very often, and just today sitting here, I noticed that there's there's action, and then there's lulls from the whole field. For sure. And that does that is that always the case? A hundred percent. No, I don't understand that. Steve Bowman, when I when he first started to pay my bills at Bassmaster, I was the bass track guy, mm -hmm. and he would tell me to sit in the in the trailer at the venue and watch the bass track times. And it's almost scientific how when, like you've seen it today, yeah. when when they start biting, we're behind. Like we, you know, the whole yeah. segment's catching and then the whole next segment's not, you know, in the next two or three that might not be. And then all of a sudden it is. It's very crazy. And one thing that I knew that it was Different scientific Different sections was, oh, of 100%. the lake. Yeah. You could be 50 miles away and you see it happen. At Lake Texoma in 2016, when Greg Hackney won, Gerald Swindle and Casey Ashley both caught the biggest bass of the event, tied for the biggest bass. They caught it the same day of competition, and they caught it within three minutes of each other. And I said, I wonder how many anglers were running down the lake when they were biting at that time. <laughs> like a couple of the biggest fish you saw all week bit in the same five minute window. Yeah. And there was somebody who was making a smart decision to run 20 miles to the next spot and missed it. And I don't know. I was going to be smart. I was going to say mm, on days one and two, we don't see it as much. 47 guys, we don't see it much. When it's down to 10 guys, we yeah. kind of notice it way more. Yeah, a little bit more lulls. Paul Marks with another catch. He's been pretty solid all throughout the day, but his size has definitely been been consistent mm -hmm. today. Just not, he doesn't have that overly big spot of bass. He's just calling for ounces at a time if he is. I want to be the guy that figures that out. Why that happens, when it happens, you know? Got to go back to money. school. Got to go get another <laughs> master's degree at that one. Uh, but it is, you know, some sun position. Moon. You mentioned the moon draws a lot of fish's attention and changes things. So we'll keep an eye on that. That would be the age-old question. Maybe one of the fishing biologists will help us with that. But Tristan McCormick, he's got it dialed in today. Been pretty consistent in the top 10 all week and now in the top spot as we go into the last few hours of fishing. Got a lead just over Shane Lineberger when we come back at Lake Hartwell. Whoa! Whoa! Look at the size of that bass! Live coverage of the St. Croix Bassmaster Southern Open at Lake Hartwell is presented by Mossy Oak Fishing. You bet. Welcome back to Bassmaster Live here at Lake Hartwell, the final day of the Southern Open season. We got one more open left for the whole Opens series, the nine tournament gauntlets that anglers are fishing. We will decide the Central Opens points race and the overall race at the next event. But this week, we wrapped up the Southern Opens and invited three more anglers to the Bassmaster Elite Series, and we will invite one angler to the glorious Bassmaster Classic in Knoxville next March based off their win today. And this guy right here, he has the rooting crowd of the entire Shryock family. Hunter Shryock and <laughs> every relative that cares about bass fishing is rooting on Brian New to win this event today. It'll get Hunter in the Classic. And I bet you the Summerall's are rooting for him as well because if they get Hunter in, he's the next one on the list to get in maybe at Rayburn and he's hooked up right now. Get to do that dock time. He had ten and a half pounds on day one, nineteen pounds yesterday, a big bag of the week. Gonna do that again. That's probably honestly why when Brian New says he used to have a hate-hate relationship with Lake Hartwell, 
it sometimes can be so difficult to yeah. dial it in here because they're biting, doing so many different things, and you make the wrong decision a couple days in a row. So he righted the ship yesterday with a, a change Not in game plan. Not gonna help, I don't think. Matt Pengra hooked up again. He told me before this last year's classic that he did hate this lake. I think it's a large he may have mouth. figured something out. Yeah. The elusive Lake Hartwell largemouth. Nice one. Welcome to the spotted bass boat. <laughs> wow, that might help. I don't know, that might be against my <laughs> Yeah, he's waiting ten spots to this like week. Weigh him in. I have a 163. Oh yeah. Pangrat called a shot. He had an omnia stream during the Lake Oahe event. They were on Facebook Live watching the show during their sponsored portion of it. And he was a guest on there and he said, if there's gonna be an open the rest of the year that I, I know I have a good chance of a top 10, it'll probably be Hartwell with a spinning rod in my hand. Really? And then so on the phone last night, that was the first thing I brought up and he was, he was ready to talk about it. <laughs> Sixty. Ooh, oh, number one is 163. Yeah. Yeah, he's probably gonna beam him. I'll reweigh it. We've talked about it before. Luke Palmer did well in the classic. You always do well at Hartwell. Pangrag doing it this week. Something about Oklahoma anglers and the way Lake Hartwell sets what up. Was it? It sets up a lot like Grand Lake. Huh? Oof, oh, that's skinny. You know, and, and we were talking about Brian New earlier, you know, not in favor of Hartwell in the past. It's funny how you fish these lakes and, and you either kind of love them or you hate them. And Hartwell, for me, I've just always loved it. It's big, I, you know, you can go do your own deal. Cold. It's, it's a pattern lake, which means you don't have to pre-fish every creek. You get on a pattern, you can run, you know, fresh water every day. That's uh, what started out really strong this morning. Had a really good morning. Caught, I don't know, eight or ten fish on buzz bait this morning, and that's kind of been dying out on me around uh, eleven o'clock every day, and just it did the same today. So now we've. Um, picked up the jig and got on some docks and um, with this water falling as much as it has and stuff they uh, the fish seem to have for me anyway have seemed to have um, pulled out of the backs of the creeks where I've been catching them at so I just kind of started a little further out when we came into this creek and immediately got a bite it wasn't uh, it didn't help us any but still yet it's a bite you gotta be getting bit to have a chance. Um, I got lucky and caught a, caught one of those Hartwell monsters earlier this morning. That was kind of cool. It's really got my weight to where it is right now. I don't know exactly what I got, but um, I know without that one what I'd have, about seven or eight pounds. <laughs> so, um, you know, any, anytime you catch a um, you catch a big fish, the final day of the tournament, you know, it's it's uh, that's what we all uh, get up in the morning for. Right now, we're just hunting around and really hoping to get um, get a couple three pounders and make this thing interesting. I mean, I'm sure the other guys are catching them and all that stuff, but you know, you can't, you can't really worry about that. All you can do is control what you're doing. Don't focus on everybody else. Just let that stuff be, and there's nothing you can do about it anyway. Um, the afternoon, the morning bite, I want the sun to stay as low as possible. Um, and I tried to run, you know, shady spots, obviously, that's kind of the top water thing is to stay in the shade. And then I need to, 
I need the sun for the shade again, but you know, I'm just fishing the docks. Huh? I see, I seen him. There's another one back here too. Good Durant's catching his turd roller back there. <laughs> How big is it? <laughs> That's how you know they're from North Carolina when they don't even have to have two hands on the rod and they can just skip There's the rod. There's another one back here. I think you touch the bank underneath that dock. That's almost the, the one of the most probably fearing things for anglers is for a Carolinian on a dock lake, on a dock pattern, to have a big fish not doing that and the rest of the day when the sun's high and bright, they get to skip docks the rest of the day. That's gotta be, especially at Hartwell, strike some fear into those spinning rod guys <laughs> offshore. That, mm. Yeah, we got two guys in the four boxes doing that right now. And I'm, I mean, I just, I can't even really talk because I'm sitting here looking at that and, and you know, just reliving old memories from the spring and stuff. It doesn't take long. You know, you get in a pocket where it's going on or you hit the right dock, it can change. If I was a bass, I'd be right there. In an instant. I mean, if we think a brush pile will hold 10, 20, 30 fish, mm -hmm. one of these docks, especially if they're a maybe an investor in Clemson, South Carolina region. Right. They're gonna have a pretty big dock and, and oftentimes you can catch them and catch them and catch them. I want Jason to comment on what, what he just said. There ought to be one right there. Yeah, I that just, dock. yeah, there's certain spots. Yeah, there's different times, you know, like in the spring, I like the docks that are close to the bank because I feel like they're getting up there as close as they can with the warmer water. And then in the summer, um, it kind of goes back to the farthest uh, dock off of the bank, you know, the closer to deep water. Um, even They can still be shallow, but you can look down a stretch of docks and there'd be one stick out. That would be the dock that I would fish. And then you get back to the fall and a lot of times they'll switch back to the ones up there closer. Um, but they all look good. And that's what's, that's what gets you on heart. Well, it got me in the classic. You know, I had a pattern going and I fished two or three and I'm like, well, the next three look good. And then the next three look good. You have to stay the pattern. You have to stay the course if you're going to run boat docks. Now in March, different days, were they setting up in different spots of the docks? No, not really in the tournament. Uh, what got me was the first day of practice, which was a week before the event started. It was dumb. I mean, if, if we would have had the tournament that week, it would have taken over 60 pounds to win. Uh, it was colder. Brian knows. Got a good He's one. caught one out. three or four on the last three or four docks. Yeah. Oh. He's going to replace his whole bag out pretty quick, it seems. Yeah. That's a pretty good large, large mouth. What'd I say? Oh, Colors. Colors. Brian is a jokester, but when he gets serious and he starts hustling yeah. around a little bit, he knows that it's happening right now. And like we mentioned, you, you've yeah. now noted you got to taste one day in studio, half a day in studio. <laughs> you know when the lulls happen on mm -hmm. the whole lake. But it's always so nice when everyone's in the lull and you're the one catching them, like yeah. Brian is right now. Now you can tell he's he's got his game face on right now. Yeah. Little at a time. Normally he weighs his fish, but he knows he caught so many cookie cutters this morning that it's all about just speed of culling. And sometimes it's beaming them. On the board, spot stick, spot has to go. Yeah. Green's That's another call Green's for him. Green's next. Green's got to go. Green has got to go. He's been pretty business-like throughout his career, even as a co-angler. Uh, I think mm -hmm. Luke Duncan told me that, man, the dude was ready with the net, all business, wanted to get back fishing himself, and he can't fish till the pro lands his fish. Very helpful. Mm -hmm. Solid fish there for him. Started out the morning with some spotted bass, but he may end up with five large heads by the end of the day. Lucas Murphy hooked up. 
See, it's crazy how we've been, how it's been dead and all of a sudden just every, everybody's rods bowed up. Every single person in the top five in the Bassmaster Classic this year caught an important fish in the last 30 minutes. <laughs> just gotta leave it in there so long. It's almost like they gotta forget that it's down there and then they see it. quarters. I forgot to mention, fellas, I just got reminded by a buddy, Trent Palmer, who's a spotted bass guy at Lake Lanier, he's fished Lake Hartwell quite a bit. This week, six years ago, your boy Ronnie won a club tournament for Clemson, <laughs> jumped in and decided to get in the college tournament on Lake Hartwell with only 10 pounds. <laughs> That's how tough it was one fall at Lake Harwell. It was, uh, if you catch it the wrong week, 20 pounds is unheard of, but 10 pounds is the is the mark. So this week we have hit it definitely at a good time. Not much by any means, but yeah, I mean, there's like five or six of them I threw in there. And I mean, they're probably sitting there looking at it for about what, 30 seconds. About ready to reel it in and it took off. Does Eric? Have a limit, Such. Derek has four fish. Yeah. So he's, he's the only one for five twelve. Yeah, he's four pounds back. I mean, he's four four. Yeah. Yeah. In one bite. Yep. And if he, even if he gains a three, make the first call. He's probably got a little bitty one in there. If he's got four mm -hmm. for five twelve. Heard you say you're looking forward to getting some redemption on Sandy Cooper. Anything else next year in the elite schedule? Starting off in Florida at Okeechobee and Seminole. This is weird, but, uh, you know, Hartwell could be one of my favorite lakes for obvious reasons. Um, just always done good there. I have not been to St. Clair in a long time. I really, really like that lake. I like that lake. Yeah, I've won a couple of events up there. 150,000 reasons why. Yeah, it doesn't make <laughs> sense, but... Uh, there's something about that lake that we just, we've always jived. You know, looking at the schedule next year, we have a really strong schedule. Um, it's going to favor, I think, a shallow water guy for the biggest part of it. And, Keep hearing that, yeah. Yeah. And uh, so, yeah, I'm looking forward to go back to the Sabine. Um, That's in June, though, first of June. It's going to be hot, yeah. But I hear you might be able to spread out more. There's what I think Brandon said last week that he, he yeah. likes it better then, yeah. than earlier. Yeah, typically year. when we go, you know, a lot of it's uh, around the spawn, whether it be the spawn or or post spawn. But I think we go in June. You know, the main, a lot of the main rivers, and and uh, it'll go down a little bit further out. I think. Which is good. If we're going to go back to the same places, you know, we need to go at different times, in my opinion. And we're definitely going at a different time. Yeah, it's been a while for Seminole and Murray. Yeah. Lay Lake. Yeah, I fished Lay whenever we uh, qualified back through their opens. I have not fished Seminole in a... And Lay was like November for first week of November, first week of December, something like that for yeah. Lay Lake. That was the last open of the year for the delayed season. Got a couple new places that we haven't been to the opens in a long time as well. Bugs Island in Virginia, that's a nostalgic 1990s, you know, <laughs> Bassmaster one, top 100s. I want to check the jug. I think that's what Shane Durant was doing <laughs> in the back back there now, I don't, you know. Might have a couple whiskers on him. Back My neck of the woods, you don't touch the jug. <laughs> you don't touch the jug, why? Because someone shoots your hand or? Yeah, you just don't never know who's watching. <laughs> we take it serious back where I'm from. 
And he takes the lead with a two pound, four ounce catfish. <laughs> Meow. Oh, he's doing one of skits for his alter ego. Lake Hartwell's getting interesting. One of those flurries just happened. Looks like Bryant Smith made a move up from seventh place into third right now as well. Matt Pangrax hanging tough in fourth. Lucas Murphy in fifth. Paul Marks in sixth. Look at that, four pounds. Four pounds, eight ounces, all the way down to eighth place right now. So we'll keep an eye on the rest of the leaderboard. But Tristan McCormick still on top as we enter the last few hours of fishing here at Lake Hartwell. Whoa! Look at the size of that bass! Live coverage of the St. Croix Bassmaster Southern Open at Lake Hartwell is presented by Mossy Oak Fishing. Welcome back to the final day here at Lake Hartwell. Bassmaster Southern Open in South Carolina. What a great place on the Savannah River. If you've never fished the Savannah River, what a unique place. We compare this place to Lake Lanier, which is not a part of that, but the lakes on this chain, Lake Russell, Lake Kiowee, you have Clarks Hill as well. A lot of places that have Bassmaster history attached to them, and Lake Hartwell, Hartwell is definitely one of those places as well. Guy closest to the dam this week, other than Matt Pangrak, who came down to Lightwood Creek at the bottom of the lake, is John Garrett, just below Sadler's, right there in view of the dam. He started the day 10th, Ron. He's climbed up. I think it's little. Yeah, it is. No, that ain't that bad. Bigger than what I got. That's the first yeah. offshore topwater fish we've seen all day. Let's see. I saw some trebles and heard some rattles, so I knew it had to be about that time, and it looks like one of the more built spotted bass we've seen, respectively. I mean, one for one for yeah. topwater fish, and it's yeah. a solid one. I mean, I expected whenever I got here this morning it was going to be, that's all it was going to be, and boy, was I wrong. John Garrett has over 10 pounds right now, and that calls for him. That'll help him in the right direction in sixth place. Hey, every spot is a couple more thousand dollars for these guys. Matt Pangrak said it last night. Ronnie, I'm going to try to get a limit and make a couple G's and put a couple G's in the bank, and then I'll go for all 40 grand for the top spot if I can. But right now, Tristan McCormick is holding off the rest of the field, and he's hooked up in the top spot. Shed. God, you see them on the graph. If they start doing that, you get far. Mm -hmm. I recognize that voice. Man Jake Latondras riding with Tristan McCormick today. Two and a half. Two and a half pounder. That's all out a pound and three quarter fish, and that'll give him another three quarters of a pound all upgrade. Right there. about as serious as you can get mm -hmm. on a great day of fishing. He knows that the chance at another classic berth is right there if he can knock it out. That'd be something qualifying through the college level one year, then the next year, do it in the opens. Probably the next year of the Elite Series. There you go. Trifecta. Mm -hmm. Keep going. Parlay. <laughs> I'm 
all day long too. Yeah. Yeah, my day's going all right. It's a slow morning, really slow morning. I didn't, you know, by the way the fish were acting, I didn't think it was gonna be so slow. They were chasing my bait really quick and getting after it, but I just couldn't convince them to, to bite. Uh, just kind of pecked around and got a small limit with uh, soft jerk bait and a jig. Actually, I had a drop shot too. And then, uh, but all my confidence is in this jig. So I picked this thing back up and I actually saw one up shallow. The first time I've done that this tournament, just kind of a single roaming up shallow on the tip of a point. Threw this thing out there and she went down on it, and that was awesome. Almost a four pounder. But I need to do that a few more times. Uh, but it just, they're so scattered right now. The ones in the piles are just super hard to get to bite. But these roamers, they bite, but they're hard to find. It's just a needle in a haystack on top of a hump or on top of a point. So keep covering water like that and hope I can run into two or three more. I'm gonna go check a few more piles now that I'm down here by the dam. That uh, I've seen fish, got some bites out of, had some good fish eat out of them. But keep running piles and then I might try to keep running some points and just look out in kind of the nothing. Because that's right where that fish was. He was sitting on top of a point, nothing around. There's one right there. There it is. We talked about it. We He's talked about it on a to... podcast just a few days ago that'll air next week on Bassmaster.com and, and all the places you listen to podcasts. And it was about college fishing. Do you go scholarship route? Do you not go scholarship route? I said that you can still make a living and be a professional one day by fishing on a club or a team. You don't have to be scholarship, but that is a great opportunity. And we're seeing it right now. We just saw John Garrett and Tristan McCormick go back to back. Another good one for Tristan McCormick to see if it calls. But you see two Bethel teammates, former Bethel anglers. Both have won the bracket, made it to the Classic that way. You have a guy like KJ Queen and Cody Huff also in the Elite Series from Bethel. When you get around a competitive team, whether it's a club or a scholarship team, and you have a bunch of other motivated anglers around you, it's going to bring out the best in you. And we see that in these four or five guys from Bethel recently. What are you going to learn? What, what do you see that these guys have that you don't have when you were you know, um, college age? The college guys was born with this. What are you talking about? <laughs> well, maybe he had the innate ability. Yeah. <laughs> I think just a quicker learning curve. You know, they. And, and just being put in that position, I fished a lot of tournaments when I was younger, but most of it was with my uncles, you know, and yeah. stuff. I didn't really take over the helm until, um, you know, probably my college days. You know, my dad and my uncle both stepped to the back of the boat and, and let me be boss. And, and I think a lot of these kids have been in that decision-making time earlier than what I was. And that's what you have to do. Or them off of that right there. Like you can fish and you can fish and you can fish cool, man. and you can learn it. But until you're put in that position to make those decisions, that's how you learn. You learn from bad decisions mm -hmm. too, don't yeah, I you? Think you, you I think, tough you, lessons I from think those. you learn more from bad than good. The little bar will get them, but how's it not? You know what I mean? Yeah. And David Gaston, not a not a college angler, but has fished a lot of local and in Alabama local tournaments or big time competition. Fished a lot there. He's born in 1996. He's three years younger than me, so he's 26 years old. So these guys, even not not in college, the young ones are, like you said, motivated. And Brian New has gone on a streak. Caught more in the last 45 minutes than he has all day. Got to ask you, Ronnie, Gaston's leading the Central Opens after two events, and he's second in the overall. So we go down. If he stays up there in the Centrals and gets top three, that's his elite qualification? Yes. If you qualify yep. in a specific division, that's where you qualify from. And then when we go to the overall after Sam Rayburn in two weeks, 
whoever's already qualified from a division, we skip them and we pick the top three overall that are not from another division. Well, right now you got Keith Poche one in overall, David Gaston second, Cooper Gallant third, then Cole Sands, Logan Parks. A couple more those college guys. Those guys would be right there. John the Sokup. And then you'd, if those guys move around, Kent DeCamero would be passed over oh, since he's already on a lease. Yep. Next year, the format will change, and you'll have to fish all nine opens to make the Elite Series, but it'll be the top nine in the overall race. It has seemingly gone quiet for everyone on the docks except Brian New, but all of the offshore guys, especially the ones closer to the dam, have really started catching them lately. That'll help. <laughs> Stay out of that cane. Stay out of the cane. Yeah, that'll help. Nice. Should start with a two. Two twenty two. Number one goes half a pound. McCormick's last fish gave him fourteen pounds two ounces on bass track, forty four pounds five ounces total. He's three one ahead of Shane Lineberger. Brian Smith is next. With 11.8, and Matt Pangrak, I think, now has 11.8 on the day. Lineberger stuck on 12.12. He hasn't called up in a while after that six pounder. I mean, he filled his limit. Get rid of some of the small fish and try to make up that three pound deficit. Didn't see this coming for Derek Lettinen. Maybe a tougher day for some drama. Maybe still time for the last hour, or hour and a half for him to catch one that matters. But I definitely thought he'd have a limit. Definitely thought he would need, you know, his kicker. He wouldn't have his kicker by this time, but I thought he'd for sure have caught some numbers and kind of started to get dialed in more. He slipped to eighth. Four fish for 512. Five and a half pounds out of the lead. I'm telling you, Lake Harwell can humble you real quick. <laughs> you say that like you know or something. Um, I'm kind of, I, I know a guy. <laughs> Good. Now Hartwell's been better certain years than others, correct? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, For it's you. always been good. For you. You know. Yeah. Christie's worst finish at Hartwell. Anglers would pay for that to be their best finishes <laughs> at Hartwell. I mean, like I said, it's the same place we fished earlier, and they were not set up like that. So I, I just really do feel like if I can just keep rotating these around, I'll hit them at a time they're feeding. I mean, I caught three back to back to back right there. Had one the first time on that caffeine shot, a big and boil on it. We're gonna put her on a hundred and go. We got three hours to make something happen. My target weight's 17.
I liked it that Hartwell is is getting low, you know, like the lake I live on. We've been high the last three or four years. I just love the fact that this time of year they get low, a lot of that grass grows come up, on, and then in the spring, on, go, 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 go. you know, these lakes come back up and you have all of that shoreline cover to fish. Makes for good spawning, Look, makes for some great fishing. For the longest time, it's been a tale of two different things but both are not normal for Lake Hartwell. There have been year stretches where it stayed low and got severely low in the winters and We're never really came up to get that shoreline even covered up. Oh, okay. And then there's been times where it's been pretty high yeah, even in the winter and never, it never had the drawdown. But on a normal year, you like the banks exposed. It allows yeah. for the spawn. Those bluegill get to hide places. The bass fry get to hide, and they get to develop a little bit more. And we have good spawns and good populations of fish. Obviously, we see Lake Hartwell's in a great situation with how many bass are here. Yeah, absolutely. It's funny. It's always changing. It's, it's never the same. Not too shabby of a place to have a bass tournament, especially in the fall. You can do so many different things. And look at that leaderboard. Yes, it's about an eight pound lead, seven and a half pound lead down to 10th. But boy, is it a five pound, five ounce lead all the way down to eighth place. Everyone's still within one big bite of making their dreams come true and making the Bassmaster Classic. We'll be right back. Tristan McCormick and the rest. Whoa! Whoa! Look at the size of that bass. Live coverage of the St. Croix Bassmaster Southern Open at Lake Hartwell is presented by Mossy Oak Fishing. Winding down just a few hours left in the fishing day. I believe they have two hours left on the water to get it done and get back to Green Pond Landing where we will crown a champion, the third winner of the Southern Opens division. We started our season way back in January at the Kissimmee Chain of Lakes in Florida, went to a shortened event in Cherokee Lake in the spring, took a long break and ended it in the fall here at Lake Hartwell. Three opposite bodies of water and our three qualifiers for the Elite Series, one from, Cali one from California, one from Canada, and one from Arkansas. You gotta be able to catch them all across the country to fish the Bassmaster Elite Series. You see the three anglers pretty far back in the Tougaloo. Got a couple right there, Lucas, at the mouth as it hits Andersonville Island in the main lake, and that's where a cluster of them, Derek, Paul, Matt, Bryant, all are around there, and then we have our two, I guess you can call them the dam dwellers, <laughs> Tristan McCormick and John Garrett down below Saddlers towards the dam, and lately, Jason, we've seen some flurries, but we've really seen some flurries from both guys near the dam at the same time. Yeah, I think, um, you know, it's about to go down. There's gonna be some really important fish caught right here. I mean, full moon, uh, it's the fall. It just kind of tells me that midday there's going to be something happen. A fat one right there. There's two on top water now for John Garrett that we've seen on camera replace some of his other fish from a drop shot earlier this morning. I remember somebody this morning saying the top water, you don't catch that many little ones, you catch good ones. I, I don't who I don't know who that guy was. Skype somebody that, or what? Yeah. <clears throat> well, I told you to bring a few baits that have worked for you at Lake Hartwell, and one of them is a top water from the, uh, from the fall. I believe that's bonehead colored. Yeah named after the designer himself. <laughs> Can't read my screen. And I'll say this, John Garrett may be kicking himself right now because this is the area of the lake he's been in all week, but he said he felt like it was dying and he started and spent a lot of his time up lake and it really didn't do anything but just give him some, some security of a limit. Now he's starting to call out all of those all right, fish down in his primary five, area. Four. Number four ain't got a beam on them. I'm gonna get under your back, buddy.
He got some fans yelling. Heard somebody off in the distance. Yeah. Is that Matt Robertson out there and <laughs> Seth? Hi. All the boys I'm staying with. Good friends. <laughs> Let's see. I don't think he'll help. Went to talk to Paul last night and kind of had to make me work for it a little bit to get some info out of him. This is my first time getting to talk to the 21 year old and said he won enough money last year around the Lake Lanier area that he was able to jump into the opens this year, especially with Hartwell on the schedule. And he said, I was hoping to be able to have a shot at this event and it works out. He does have a shot going into the final day to win this tournament. There's a guy who knows a lot about spotted bass. It's just, there are certain little intricacies and certain things. It could be a slight depth change. You could be a little bit closer to the channel, the main river channel than other people, and, and that can mean the difference in catching 50 in a day and catching five in a day. A yeah. Better. Derek Lettinen hooked up, I believe you They're said, Suge. a little shallower today. He did fill his limit during a commercial break just a few minutes ago, but this one, I believe, would be an upgrade from what he has currently. Not a big one, but get rid of something. Get rid of that spot that I just caught. Barely. We might have thinking they might be moving a little further up the creek. I think that'll get rid of that spot. Wrong size, but hey. But anyway. Good. You're not biting it super aggressive, Bill. That area looks real familiar. <laughs> He had 17, like 13, day one, 15, five. Right now he's got five for seven pounds. Yeah. I feel like that's your type of dock right there in the fall, Jason. Mm -hmm. One with just enough boat dock in the water to hold one. Mm -hmm. A little steeper bank than some. You shocked with his bright crankbait color? I, I, I wanted to say something, but I don't want to be the armchair, you know, that oh, guy. Dude, please do it no. so I can remind you of that later. You yeah. Know. Like I said, I can't argue with him. He's he's fishing in the top ten. Where are all the brims sitting right there? I mean, who would have thought, you know. That might be my sign. Well, Stetson throwing a red crankbait. Yeah. You know, it's sometimes it's just something a little different. These suckers are sitting right where that little probably transition is. So you can't argue with success no matter how they get there? You know, one thing, one of the things in the fall, I was thinking about earlier, we were talking about the thumbnail shad. You know, there's two, there's, I like to do one of two things. Either try to match what, the, what it is, or just throw something that's so weird that it, you know, it gets their attention. It's, it's kind of, one or the other. Matt Pangrak was the one who mentioned the thumbnail shad. He's talked about it throughout the day. And he told me on the phone last night, he said, at a certain point, I might go swing and throw a glide bait. And I'm like, you're going to go imitate thumbnail shad all day. And then you're going to go throw a glide bait. And he said, I, mean, I don't know what else I would probably do. <laughs> and so he said uh, he had a four or five pounder um, swat at and miss his glide bait or top water the other day. And so he was hoping a glide bait maybe would get him to commit more. So we go over to Bryant Smith, the West Coast angler. Come on, get it. 
kind of end his season strong. Already made the Elite Series and oh, right on his jig one. again. Oh, it is too. Another big one. Golly. Mm -hmm. Holy. Two, three. Oh my God! Another big one, dude. <laughs> yes. I cannot believe that. That's two of the biggest fish I've caught this week today. What's In your, the last hour. What's your guess, Ronnie? Unreal. Well, I already know he said his biggest of the week so far had been 330, so it's I mean, bigger than 330. About. I'm gonna say 369. Okay. Four pounder. Uh, oh man. Ooh. I think it's a four pounder. Heck yeah, dude. <laughs> four pounder. Get rid of but. number one. All right. Switch sides with you real quick. See what that calls for him. Mentions two big ones. He has a three and a half. And a four pounder now. That's a good swap. Calls that a two pounder. That's a good swap. Nah, what he called was way smaller. Way smaller, okay. Yeah. Oh. Must have. That's right, dude. Must have put one of them as a two and it was probably <laughs> one. That's what half. it's all yeah. about, man. That was awesome. I saw that fish. I totally missed the pile, too. I saw her in that pile. I missed it by about 20 feet and she swam like a bullet to it. She went down on it. I was just dragging it. Just like you just inch it. Just inch it, inch it, inch it. Thick. Mmm. Love that. And then she proceeded to almost pull the rod out of my hands. Future Elite Series. I love that angler, too. Angler, right? <laughs> yes, Future Elite Series angler. Goodness gracious. He looks big. Tall? Yeah. The tall one. Yeah. You looking for basketball opponents? No, I just don't. I, I don't, you know, I. <laughs> If we're going to get new guys, let's get little ones. So <laughs> we don't have to, you know, if we both get in the same creek, then I just don't you like fit. them. That's yeah. a new way of looking at it. Yeah, I don't like them bigger than Is me. Is that why Tommy Biffle had to raise his voice because he wasn't too tall? Is that what it was? Bryant Smith with another good spotted bass. He's caught all spotted bass all week long. He said when he came, Nelly. he came here four there. weeks ago to just check just it out for a few minutes. And, and he had fished a tournament, a pro tournament here. Um, I think it was in April or May. Man, that's huge. That's huge. Um, there's a couple looking at it right now. Come on, bite. Bite, bite, bite. Um, yeah, four pounder. That makes up some ground pretty quick. Still got a lot of work to do if I want to actually make a run at this but they're biting today finally i'm getting my butt kicked this morning could not figure out what they wanted i don't know why you know it's gotten progressively tougher but i mean i got like no bites this morning but we're good now i've got about probably 13 and i'm looking at three right here just screaming towards that thing. Come on, eat it. Straight down to the bottom. Just be there. That's all I want. It's just you to pick it up right now. You followed it all the way down. You went down to 30 feet of water. You were in 10. And you're going to swim that whole way and not eat it. You make no sense, fish. But if I keep casting at fish like that and I get a couple more like those to bite, man, we'll be looking real good here in a little bit. But they seem to just be kind of wandering today. You know, that one was around a pile, but he wasn't in it. And then that one I caught before at 380, it was, it was just on nothing bank. So I'm just kind of running these main lake points down by the dam that's you know, the channel swings into it. 
little bit flatter. I know it's got some brush on it here or there. And just panning around and hoping that I see the right one. Like I said earlier, you know, you, you got to look at it. You got to throw at 100 of them to get one to bite. Fast track has Smith for 13 and a half, second largest on the day to Tristan McCormick, who he trails by about two pounds. Tristan, oh, Derek's hooked up now, but Tristan, Bryant, and John Garrett are all building very good bags down that towards my the help. Now. Maybe. That's a little that's a little chub, but I don't think it's gonna help. Not enough to worry about anyway. They're all too small anyway. He's Mr. Matter of Fact, isn't he? Yeah. he the further we get in the creek, the more bites we're getting. Though. Last 30 minutes have been influential for the leaderboard as we've seen Tristan McCormick extend his lead. John Garrett try to cut into it a little bit with some topwater fish. Now we're seeing Bryant Smith and his half ounce jig coming into play on some of those brush and cane piles. I don't even have to be close to him for Brian Smith to catch a four pounder. That four pound spot will go a long way, just like that six pounder for Shane Leinberger earlier. We'll be right back at Lake Hartwell. Look at the size of that bass. Live coverage of the St. Croix Bassmaster Southern Open at Lake Hartwell is presented by Mossy Oak Fishing. Winding down our day, we only have 90 minutes left of fishing, I do believe, on this tournament day, the championship Saturday. If you're not at Green Pond Landing and you're in the state of South Carolina, you need to make it over there to Anderson and that boat ramp and event center today because it's going to be a fun way. And looking at the leaderboard now, we've got a couple anglers all within three or four pounds of each other. One big bite, including our day one and day two leaders, Shane Leinberger and Derek Letting in are both in the top four and have kind of rebounded from slow points of their day. Stay in that top five hunt. Shane Leinberger with a six pounder. That helps out big time. And Derek had a three pound lead coming into today. But right now, they're chasing Tristan McCormick and Bryant Smith. We go out on the water to John Garrett. 2016 College Classic Bracket Champion, one of the most dominating performances we saw in the College Classic Bracket. He got to fish it, qualified for his home lake, Kentucky Lake. Come on, here they come. Three days of that and punched his ticket to the Classic. Might have switched up to a swim bait. So I'm winding it. John Garrett, another good fish, maybe a cull for him. This afternoon has been great. Jason for him caught a limit this morning, but this could be the third one that replaces those first five. Yeah, looks like it's getting a little bit overcast, winds picking up, top, top water moving bait. Need a big one. Um, big may not get as many bites, but probably gonna, you know, if you get a bite on it, it's probably gonna go in the live well. Like we said, that was John Garrett. Keith Cole keeping him in the top four or five. So we head over to Paul Marks. A little more top water action, maybe. Mm -hmm.
Jason, do you beam or weigh your fish? Or? I beam them um, usually. I actually just started weighing some this year at St. Lawrence River. Uh, you know, those smallmouth are so close and they look very similar. Yeah, and they're, they're so crazy on the beam, so it was quicker to weigh them. I'm a big believer, no matter if I'm fishing shallow, deep, whatever, I catch one, I want to get back in there as fast as I can. So I earlier today. Yeah, I want to uh, do the most, I want to do it the most efficient way, but also be That's accurate. Terrible. You can catch a bunch of little ones. I can have some decent bites. They'll over to David Gaston. Just not hooking them today. I'm not eating it. I mean, they're coming up and hitting it like they're supposed to, just not getting the hooks in them. I ain't seen that many fish cruising today. You know, the one fish I did see, a little group cruising, they didn't eat. Just trying to catch a, you know, at least a three pounder to top it off. David Gaston, some catches from this morning. And what a fun pattern throwing a pop bar for some wolf pack fish. But Jason, we mentioned it. Got a top 10 at Ross Barnett, got a top 30 at Oneida. Another top 10 at the Chesapeake, third place at the Red River, and now another top 10. So four of his last five events have been top 10s on the Bassmaster Opens. New York, Mississippi, Louisiana, South Carolina, a lot of different states. Yeah, and it's, it's tough to be that consistent on those different styles of water. You know what he's doing here, uh, you know, chasing wolf packs, it's, I mean, it can be very inconsistent. Like you say, you pull into a pocket, you gotta go left or right. You go right and the wolf pack's to the left. That's, I feel you, buddy. <laughs> Lake Hartwell, I feel you. Caught the jug. I wanna... You know, but I, I bet his overall goal, I mean, obviously he wants to win this event and get in the, and get in the classic, but uh, you know, being in the Elite Series, having an invitation there, that'll take some of the sting away, Butchered you know, this one up. if he was not to win this event. And he's going to Lay Lake, which he's, what, 20 miles away from maybe really? Tops in his hometown. If he makes the Elite yeah, Series. Yeah, so if he makes the, well, it's looking good, so, but. Yeah, I was going to say chickens. that. Right now with David Gaston in, this, in the overall yeah. race. Second. Let's just say something happened in the Centrals. In the final event, he didn't make today. it in the top three there. In the overall, right now, Definitely Keith no Poche, Cooper Gallant, they're all in. More so Got a bunch of big third place right now would be 74 points behind him. And then it's another five to 10 points behind them. So he's almost got an 80 point lead going into the last, you know, 180 to 200 boat tournament. He said, what do I need to do to next week? I said, well, why don't you go get a top 40? And you know that you did it, but he could honestly finish 70th to 80th. That would be his magic number. You finish 80th, it doesn't matter what anyone else does. You've got your competition boxed out. Yeah, he's leading the Centrals with 393 points. Jimmy Washam's 390. Todd Reisinger, Another great young angler. 371. Matt Pangrag hooked up. You go down those centrals and you got Nick LeBrun, Bradley Hallman, Cole Sands, yeah, James yeah. Nigmeyer, Charlie Hartley's 10th in the point. Cole Sands is in the overall race as well and he would be the second place person right now. So behind David Gaston. You thinking about fishing the opens and sometimes it seems like you jump in some. Is it is it based on the schedule or is it based on your free time? Winning the classic probably distracts you a little bit more or <laughs> the money in the bank, you don't gotta worry about making the, you know. <laughs> yeah, it's uh you know, I would fish more of them. We just we have a busy schedule and you know, my kids right now are uh at a time where I like you know, it's it's fun to be around the house and, and go to soccer games and stuff like that. We're building a house. Um, but definitely, it, de in the back, it sure look depends on the schedule. You know, I'm in the Elite Series, hopefully in the Classic, or I guess I am in the Classic, but. Well, I'll ask you that. We got a couple new places on the Opens for next year that, I say new, places we haven't seen frequently or before. 
We're going to have a mix of, we have Lake, we have both Lake Eufaula's. We've got the one in Alabama mm -hmm. and we've got the one in Oklahoma. What's the Oklahoma one in the middle of June going to fish like? Because I drove over it and I was like, man, I'm passing a lot of lakes and it's like the same lake. It's giant. I think 117,000. Uh, you know, it's typically 80 to 85% of that lake will be very, very dirty, but they live in it year round. Is that a part of the Red River? flow in or what river Canadian. makes it Canadian? Oh, yeah, okay. I think it's the Canadian. That's, that's what meets Texoma. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. so uh, it's big and, and honestly June will be good. There'll still be a lot of fish shallow um, and it's been fishing. It's been on the uptick, you know, this spring. They were catching a lot of uh, mid-20 bags there to win events. So, um, but typically June, you know, a guy has 16 and a half to 18 a day. You'll probably walk away with it. Got a couple other things. We've got Bugs Island, Virginia. I don't know if you've ever been there. It's, Never been there. It's a pretty big, it looks like Lake Hartwell Such just on its side. Mm -hmm. You know, it's, it runs east to west, not north to south. Um, it's a nostalgic well, place. In the 1990s, we fished there. Toledo Bend in April will be one. And then also we have Wheeler Lake returns to the Bassmaster schedule. Middle of May at Wheeler. That'd be a good one. And then we also ended out, I asked you, I said, is there a certain lake that you'd like to fish just at a different time? And you said, I would love to do the Harris Chain at a different time than February. And we we're we're going to go in October. And that was when the college championship was, when it took 80-something pounds for three days. Slugfest. Yeah, 20 pounds a day got you second place, and you lost by 20 pounds. That's how big the, the winners, which is Cole Sands. We mentioned him in the Open. He won that event. So a couple different lakes. We have Lake of the Ozarks in September as well. That's People, really a good schedule. Yeah. You know, and that's honestly, I'll be, I'll be real honest with you. I look at the open schedule. I look at lakes that are big, so we're not on top of each other. You know, where I can actually go fishing, and and uh, you know, some of the smaller lakes get a little more frustrating. Even like a Lake Hartwell, you see a guy <laughs> doing extremes. They're going mm -hmm. way offshore, or they're going way to the dam, or they're going way up the Tougaloo, or something, just trying to get a couple pods of fish maybe to themselves yeah. just a, a dock that has cobwebs on it well, can I ask you that let's say you get a day one on a 190 boat open you get 120th draw where does that put you in your your whole tournament plan um typically behind schedule uh you know what I've learned though as I get older the more I um kind of freak out about a starting spot you know like I gotta have this spot I gotta have this spot I get there and it, it usually doesn't pan out. It's usually my second, third, you know, fourth, fifth stop where things start rolling. Um, I've learned in my career that I may not be fishing around in the best areas because I, I just don't run into a lot of people out there fishing. I, That's good when you do run into somebody, they're usually saying, oh good, I'm near where Jason Christie's <laughs> yeah, fishing. Which is not good. <laughs> Yeah, I heard a couple of people texted me and said, yeah, I saw Christy at Santee and I thought that was going to be a good thing and it just wasn't. <laughs> oh, so, wow. I just I messed wow. up. Wow. Ooh. <laughs> Ooh. Coming, off, coming off the classic. You just there, remember you. that yeah. after we go next year. I, uh, <laughs> I kind of got fooled in that event. Um, you know, you I were, got, were you fishing up in the swamp or like the, yeah. the cypress tree area? Yeah, I, you know, I, I got my boat and went way back in the trees and got some bites and I thought they were spawning and it just, they tricked me and it took me a day and a half to realize that they weren't back there spawning, they were actually back there eating and they had moved around. But yeah. you know what? You didn't have decoy I fish. did finish second from the last, but the week before and the couple of weeks after, uh -huh. I don't even remember no, that. it don't matter, yeah. yeah. I mean, you make 400 grand. And I, had you, I remember because I had you on my fantasy team, but I remember doing the story on the stock market. If you were you were a ticker uh, going yeah. up and down, man, you would have made a big old V. That's, that's my career though. But you said that. You said it is. you put the tin cup. But I go valleys, for it, your even if I'm not. Low, you know. Even if I'm not excelling, I'm I'm going for it. Yeah, I mean, I. That's and you good. said you fished the same mm -hmm. on Santee and Chick. Yeah, that's yeah, that's the way that I grew up fishing. You know, we fished a really competitive regional area where first place would be a bass boat or twenty five grand, and second place would be fifteen hundred dollars. So you, I mean, there was no reason to lay up. You better figure out how to win or you're going to starve. Yeah, yeah. Kind of and, and I just never have been able to shake that. That's most we just saw that in the college bracket last week. Now an open is kind of 
not winner take all, but man, the winner sure gets yeah. the spoils of a big oh, 42,000 check and a classic berth. When you, you see some guys do some crazy things when they make the top 10 because the opportunity to win doesn't come around a whole bunch for every angler. On average, you know, there's gonna be 10 anglers with a shot to win every week. But at Lake Hartwell, when you're five pounds back, you have a very good shot to still win. And we're seeing that with Lineberger starting in ninth, having a really good shot, John Garrett. We have ninth and 10th, well actually, seventh, ninth, and 10th are all inside the top five right now, you know, with a shot to win with one more fish. The only person who's been in the top two or three that stayed is Tristan McCormick. That speaks for a guy just out of college. Yeah. And I, like I said, I, I mentioned that Riles about this morning. This dude's, uh, he's just too calm and too cool to be as young as he is, in my opinion. But you know, times have changed. There's no telling how many, how many tournaments you think this kid's fished. Uh, just in general, like doesn't matter yeah. what leagues, just tournaments. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Yeah, a bunch. I mean, he's it, probably fishes 37 a year. Yeah. You know, no matter if it's home at Kentucky Lake or or on the road. Right. I mean, it just it's the more experience, the more comfortable you are with your abilities, and do it and figuring out and, yeah. and getting to make the right decisions, or yeah. figuring out to how to learn to make the right decisions. But you're also cool and calm when things are going your way. And even though he doesn't know that he is unofficially leading the event, he is unofficially leading the event. Things are going his way, so. Well, he was calm and cool in the classic bracket last year when he officially knew in a head-to-head -head he was down by 10 pounds. And we saw him just fish by fish, just work his way back up after the midday break. And they don't get it, they get the midday update and then they don't get another update until the final. Mm. So he didn't know if Tucker continued to catch him and Tucker Smith's a, fantastic angler we're going to see him possibly on the Bassmaster Elite Series very soon won multiple high school championships and for Tristan to just fish by fish and the last one it's one of those things where like he needs two pounds five ounces to take the lead two pounds eight ounces and you're like wow he's came all the way back he did he officially made the comeback I remember that storm break we had where they were to cover under Delayed the bridge and the dark <laughs> eyes look that he gave Tucker Smith <laughs> was kind of crazy. <laughs> Trying to read his buddy like a book. I guess. He was intense, so that's good to be out there fishing and intense. What do you have, five elite trophies? Or was Chickamauga six? You've won two opens, you you've won bull shoals. Eight total BASS wins out of 101 entries. I mentioned that as one every 12.6 entries. Uh, but he's the, got but six, the, no, he's but got the six elite wins now. Yeah. Six elite. What is it? St. Clair, Bull Shoals, Sabine, Dardanelle, Chickamauga. I think that's it then. You count the classic and then two opens. Two opens and the classic. Five, eight yeah. total. Eight total. For you in those eight victories, idling back in to the ramp the final day, did you ever feel in any of those that you won it? Uh, most of them, not <laughs> definitely not the classic, and definitely 100% not Chickamauga. I had a little bit of a feeling at the classic, but Chickamauga, I was blown away that I won that event. Yeah. The others, I kind of had a feeling. Well, we know idling in last week for the college classic bracket, neither one of them. They were both saying sorry. They were so disappointed. They let everyone down, and and Lewis Minetti won and made the classic, but. Tristan McCormick looking to idle into Green Pond with some confidence today. A great final day, the biggest bag of the day. That has him from second place into the top spot with a little bit of wiggle room. Just under two pound lead for Tristan McCormick as we enter the last hour of fishing coming right up. Live coverage of the St. Croix Bassmaster Southern Open at Lake Hartwell is sponsored by Minn Kota. Power pole. Skeeter boats. And by Rapala.
trucking right along. Just over an hour left in our fishing day and our live show day. We will be ending the show when they start to check in at Green Pond Landing and we'll kind of know exactly what we should expect at the final day weigh-in. If you're there in the vicinity of South Carolina, make it to the weigh-in because we're going to see somebody punch their ticket to the Bassmaster Classic. For most of these guys, it'll be their first time going. For guys like Brian New, John Garrett, Tristan McCormick, it'll be their second berth into the big dance. You always want as many shots on goal for 300,000 and the biggest trophy in the sport, don't you, Jason Christie? Absolutely. You can't win the Classic unless you're there. And the more Classics you fish, obviously the better chances you have of winning one. And for a lot of these guys who have fished maybe one Classic, like John Garrett, Tristan McCormick, very stoic, very confident, mature anglers for their age. But man, you fish your first Classic a little different than you fish the rest of them. You oh, fish yeah. a little tight, little little fanish, you know, and you got to really settle in and be like, I got to be here to, to win, not participate. Yeah. I've heard guys say they were a little starstruck the oh, first time they fished goodness, in a Bassmaster absolutely. Classic. Absolutely. Going through that. Uh, yeah. I remember my first one like it was yesterday, home, Grand Lake. Home body of water. Almost. Yeah. Yeah. Everybody said, oh, what are you going to do with all, the, with all of the, you know, the boat traffic? The boat's following you. I'm like, I'm not going to worry about it. So I'd kind of develop this, hey, I'm going to look ahead, pull up on the first point, And I noticed four or five boats following me when I came out of takeoff. And I catch one, you know, like a four and a half, five pounder, and turn around and look, and there's like 50 boats already out there. And my uh, stomach just got weak. You know, it, it changed. Just the, the thought way. of all the spectators yeah, on I the mean, water. Yeah, I mean, like you, all of the people, you know, you just felt like the weight on your shoulders got heavier and heavier whenever you weren't catching fish. Well, uh, now that you're a now that you're a seasoned pro, you know how to manage that. You got to stop a little farther. Yeah, now away I'm running from land. those people. <laughs> you know. <laughs> well, you knew. We said the pressure Jason Christie's going to have is going to be just like his first one. He goes into a classic as a favorite. We know the 2018 story where you had the lead going to the final day, and it was just one of those days. It's something we're seeing with Derek letting in today, but you got to right all those wrongs and kind of cross out the demons in your mind. You handled it very well from start to finish. You were in it to win it. And on that final day, there was an opportunity, kind of the door open for, for demons to creep in, and you fought them off yeah. and went to the docks and did what you did best. Yeah, I, you know, you say that again, and I get goosebumps watching this footage. I mean, it's just, you know, it's such an important thing that happened, you know, I, to conquer that demon that's always been with me uh, but you know I go back to that day the third day there was they started creeping in a little bit and after I left my starting spot um, you know Jake looked at me the camera guy Jake the camera guy is what he's known as now and Jake the camera guy. yeah he yeah. goes you know you've only weighed in you typically cull out everything anyway and I was like you know you're right you know and the rest of the day we were just it was fun, and I actually got after him about noon. I said, hey, you're too quiet. And he literally just peeks around the camera, and he goes, I'm about to watch magic happen. It's only two things he said all day. And those, even though the cameraman is not part of the team, it really helped me a Keeps lot. Keeps you focused. Yeah. A lot of anglers would love to have a camera guy that's supportive. And Jason, you've, you've been on both ends of, the, ends of the spectrum, finishing second place, finishing first. Uh, for you, what advice do you give to maybe some of these guys someone today who might make their first classic what advice do because you, you need to enjoy it because not many people you might never get to go back right. and not many people have ever fished in that event yeah that's the first thing i mean obviously if you go to this event you're going to try to win it but you enjoy it i mean there's so many things so many people so many eyeballs on you um, at that event you want to you want to remember it you know don't put so much pressure on you that um you know you don't have a good time it's it's what I fish all year for um, to qualify to get in it. And once I get in it, you know, now that I've been in a few of them, yes, it's all about winning. But your first one, especially, just go have fun and, and just let, you know, let the chips fall where they are. Enjoy well, the experience. Yeah. What about next year? What's your outlook at uh, Knoxville? You that's got a top good. 10 I'm there back in 2021. Back. Yeah. yeah. I mean, that's, wow. uh, you know, I wanted to win a classic so bad up until this year. Now you want to win two classics. Now I want to win the <laughs> next one even. I mean, once you see what happens, you know, and, and you get treated the way that you're treated and everybody wants your attention, now I want it way more than I even wanted the first one. So I've never, I don't think ever went and practiced for a classic pre-practice. I'm probably going to make a trip out there. Um, yeah, I'm, 
I'm all about it now. Jason Christie trying to make a couple classics and put a couple more big trophies on your shelf. I hear you're uh, maybe building a new facility just to house your trophies, so we'll have to see if you can add to that as we go out to Lucas Murphy hooked up live. Been a little while. We Last time we saw him, he had moved up to third or fourth place. Now he's dropped back to eighth. We'll see That's if Murphy a good one. can move up the leaderboard with this one. Come on, Custom Light. Do your job. Oh. There you go. Maybe. I'll tell you what, with these spotted bats, you got to have a good drag. That lose custom light is awesome. It's brand new. Do you have that, or is he fishing with equipment that you don't even have yet? Lose custom light. Oh, you don't you don't fish a spinning rod much anyway. Yeah, so you no, I, I you break it I out have a little few bit. Of those. <laughs> Just make sure call I for Lucas this. Murphy. He had an important call in the last ten minutes of one of his previous two days to make it to the final day. And to be it's it's kind of crazy, Such, when you look at the leaderboards on day two of an event. Some of these guys had a key call to get them into the top ten. A couple guys had a key call to get into fourth, but honestly, this week. Your last fish of the day didn't just get you in the top 10, it probably got you in contention because it's so close. Yeah, and it's gonna go down to that today again, Ronnie, I believe. We're, 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 we're tight and there's guys who aren't even close to their target weights or only two guys in the teens at all. Come on. McCormick and Smith. I thought about it. Got him. Be a big one. Don't you jump. John Garrett didn't look like the best of mornings, and that might be a tough final day for him as he's situated, but big move for him, and man, look at that one from Brian New. Might be a little skinny, but it's another largemouth that'll go to his tally and look like a long one, Jason. Yeah. I'm tell I told you this morning, I really liked what he was doing. You know, you, it's just a, you know, it's a numbers game on those docks. You know, there's not a special dock. There's not a special stretch. You just got to fish enough, enough of them to get it in front of a couple good ones. You know, Brian knew he had to be doing that yesterday when he got our oh, biggest he bag of them. Another little place, made a little move. 19 pounds. I had one shot at him, and like 30 of them followed me out. They're blowing on it, but it's part of the game. There's no little pile right over here that had some big large mouth in it. So hit this. Probably run back, hit another shoulder, maybe, probably just one. It's already two o'clock. We gotta catch a freaking big one, quick. I might be able to do it around a ramp, I don't know though. I mean, I feel like this is my best option down here. They're freaking everywhere. Here they come, come on. Oh, oh, he boiled on it. It's the name of the game out here, fellas. You can have 20 pounds worth of blow-ups and not catch one of them. Name of the game. Edgar. Where is that pile? Oh, 
gosh, come on. Eat it, please. Come on. Jason, you've seen this sport from before forward facing sonar to after. You're a guy who your style, I wouldn't be surprised to see you with no graphs on the boat, but also you're one of the most proficient at it. So how have you seen the sport change Never. with it? And it's not an end all be all. No, it's not. I mean, looking at these guys today, I mean, they're seeing a lot of fish um, that they can't catch, you know, just because you have uh, live scope doesn't mean you're going to catch everyone that you throw at. I think a lot of the guys that did well before forward facing sonar are still doing well. It's just, you know, it's how much you work at it. Um, that's a good one. So. You know, in this lake, it, I use it every day, no matter if I'm fishing two foot deep, 10 foot yes, deep, sir. or 40 foot deep. <clears throat> this style of tournament, though, this you know, where they're out wandering and stuff, and, and you're able, this is where it shows off. I need to find out which one my small one is. You know, a viewer that's watching this, you know, you see these guys just throw to the left, throw to the right, like they may just be just guessing. They're not. They see them down there swimming, and they're trying to lead them and get them to bite. That's more like it there. Three and a half. Two. Yep. Did he say two and a half? Or three and a half? Do what? Said three. I just pulled up to my best spot and they're actually biting. Um, Trying to make hay while they're while it lasts, but there have been big ones here all week. This is the first time I've got them to bite good. John Garrett finished 21st here in the fall of 2020. Keep it up. There's enough Last here to really we here do some damage. Fall. I can't tell if that's a topwater or a glide bait. It, I almost. <laughs> I don't want to name drop baits, but it did look like a, a popular herring swim bait that's a hard jointed one. Oh, yeah. But then you see, you see he's reeling it like he would maybe like a, a plopping style topwater, but it's not a topwater. Yeah. I feel like it's got to be just subsurface. John Garrett's been on one of those hot streaks as well. We talked about David Gaston with top tens over the last five opens. Four of those being top 10s. Well, for John Garrett, he's got an 18th. He's got a top 10 this week, a 38th, a 21st, and a 26th with only one bad finish mixed in there in between. So he's been on a hot streak as well, one of the best young anglers in the game. We might have two college teammates fighting for the, for, fighting for the trophy <laughs> on the final way. Former Bethel guys, today. huh? Tristan McCormick and John Garrett. John's com completely cold out his whole bag this morning with these top water fish and swim bait fish as we're bringing it into the Bassmaster Studios sponsored by Marathon. We want to say thank you to Jason Christie. Congratulations on your elite trophy and your classic win this year. Thank you for representing Bass the way you have and appreciate you coming in to spend a couple hours on Fox Sports 1 with us at Hartwell. Yeah, I've had a lot of fun. You know, if there's one reason I miss a deer hunt is to come <laughs> hang out with you guys. I've learned a lot. <laughs> you know, you watch the little flurries and the dead times and stuff. So maybe when I quit fishing, Someday I'll Write a book. come join you. I know I'll come <laughs> join you. Yeah, hey, I'm cool with that. You know what I'm saying? Like we always need very reputable people on the the desk for Bassmaster Live. Such, uh, any last things for Jason Christie before well, he gets I, out I of here? I just want to wish him good luck when he goes hunting. He he tells us the uh, rut is already on in Oklahoma, yeah. and mm -hmm. uh, he's got some house building to do, but he's going to get out there and on the deer stand and get some deer. I may try to make it to weigh in. You know, just yeah, make it to Green Pond. Yeah, and watch out. Yeah. Jason Christie, our guest for the day, appreciate you because in about an hour, I'm going to give you, I'm going to put you on the spot. Does Tristan McCormick, one hour left in the day, hold his lead over Bryant Smith, Shane Leinberger, and John Garrett? You know, you, <laughs> you have to go with him, but it's really first through fifth. 
it's a, a bite or two away, so I'm not going to put my money on anybody. We'll keep an eye on fifth place Derek Lettinen, our day two leader. He still has a small bag and he can call up any time now. We're here at the Abu Garcia Bassmaster High School Combine presented by Skeeter. We've got some really cool stuff going on this week. We started this project about two years ago when the concept was here. So when we opened the doors last year, all the kids came in, they were able to meet all the coaches, the competition showed all that. It really became quite a cool event. It's been even bigger and better this year. We've spent more time planning it. You know, we kind of worked out some kinks that we may have had the first year. So now we're at 100 kids, um, which is 25% more than we had last year. You know, still 20 schools that are here. They're all offering scholarships. One of the coolest stories that we had from last year is over two and a half million dollars in scholarships were awarded directly from this event. Um, I was talking to some of the coaches earlier and he grabbed four kids from this event that all got scholarships to come to his school. And you can talk to all the schools here and they're having the same positive reactions to it all. There's a lot of schools that couldn't be here or don't offer scholarships that want to be involved. And so there is so much room for growth as we see growth, you know, in high school to college going on through up all the way to the elite series. You know, these kids are getting more engaged to this. It's more interesting to them. They're choosing their colleges that they want to go to. And it's grown so much in the last few years. And this is kind of one of those events, a lot of fun. You know, the kids, like I said, they get to work with all the colleges, get to meet the coaches, um, get an idea of what campus is like. Tomorrow we'll do a little bit more formal sit down where they can start sharing transcripts and the fishing tournament and kind of getting an idea of the individual processes. And then in the afternoon, we actually have the fun time and that's the competition. And these kids are out here and you know, they're gonna give it their all. We're doing a long distance competition, an accuracy competition and a boat driving with skills challenge type competition. So that's really the fun part, these kids they're all super competitive. That's why they're here. They want to be the best. They want to go to the best schools. They want to win the competitions tomorrow. So it's a lot of fun. Year after year, we're going to see this kind of continue to grow and kind of see some of the kids that we met at this first event. So one, one of the kids that was at our event last year won uh, the high school national championship this year. So um, he's already got a scholarship from this event last year to go to school to do it at the next level. So it's all about kind of growing the levels. Welcome back to Bassmaster Live here at, at Lake Hartwell. I almost said Lake St. Croix, but it's the St. Croix Bassmaster Southern Opens here. Anderson, South Carolina, final day action. Whittled the field down from 200 boats or so, 200 pros to the top 10. And boy, were the, was the leaderboard tight yesterday, and it is even tighter today. A slight margin for Tristan McCormick over Bryant Smith. But man, the rest of those guys are tight, about two and a half pounds, three pounds, separating second to ninth place. And they're all basically one bite or so away from possibly putting their name in the hat for a Bassmaster Classic berth. We talk about it, 15 pounds a day. That's a great number at Lake Hartwell in the fall to try to be consistent with. 15 a day will probably get you in the top five or so. And this week it has you unofficially in the top spot at 45 pounds for three days will be a great weight to win with and McCormick's right under that goal weight. Here we got him at 44.5 running on Bash Rack. He's got our big bag of the day 14.2 on Bash Rack. John Garrett just moved up to third. His last fish gave him 13 pounds 14 ounces but of course he's uh, two pounds and change behind Tristan McCormick. Brian Smith in second. Third largest bag of the day, 13 and a half pounds to 42.6. He's got about two pounds of work. See Lieberger's in there in the mix, three pounds back. Brian New, 3-3 three, three back. The leader, Derek Leitonen, four pound. Lettinen, 4-3 back. He's only got seven pounds on the day though, Ronnie. He's letting them back in the game. Lettinen, huh? Yeah, letting them back in the game. That he still has a great him. shot. He's got a... I have two calls. Unless he catches one of the uh, monsters, one of the big fish this week. We saw one of the biggest six, leads. Six. We saw one of the biggest leads that you can have in a Bassmaster Open for two days of competition at the Chesapeake Bay. Chris Boudry had a big lead going into the final day and gave that up to ninth place. And so why would we be even 
more shocked with Lake Hartwell with the whole top 10 be within five pounds or so. Well, You're all got a shot to win this thing. As Christie said, this is a humbling lake that you can 100%. be here one day. I thought it was a little bit more stable with the spotted bass, more aggressive well, biting. Well, see, the deal often. is because you can go target spots or you can go target largemouth. The one drawback with spots, you may have five consistent sized fish, but you might not have a kicker. With largemouth, you may get that kicker one day and not the next. For guys that run a pattern, this is a pattern little, lake, suits, right. like Jason Christie today. was saying. The, a pattern Ain't lake, no big one. your pattern could be starting or it could be waning. You know, it could be going away and you don't know it. And so until tournament day when you have to really, really do your best, it's hard to tell. Derek Lettinen with a small one right there. So we go out to your unofficial leader, Tristan McCormick. Wide variety of success today in this four, bo four box with the unofficial first and second place. Matt Pangrek sitting right there in the middle of the top ten. And Paul Marks had a solid day numbers-wise, but just nothing too dramatically big to call up. And he's falling to ninth place today. A message about 30 to 45 minutes ago, Such from Derek Lettinen's day one co angler gave me the heads up, which we talked about. He said that on the phone, his his big window of opportunity was 11:30 to two today. That wasn't the case for Derek; it didn't work out. But he said, "Hey, Ronnie, I was Derek's co angler the first day. It's not really a letdown for him right now. He caught his second and third biggest fish of his day one when he was leading, tied for the lead, 17:13." Yeah. Caught him around this time of the day. I'd expect maybe him to go back to some of those places you saw him in the morning. He said it's all about timing on the phone last night with me, and he said the same thing in the boat. It's all about timing, and so some of those places, they'll yield a good fish for him every day. It's just what time of day it does. So he said Derek was a great boater to be with, and, and Derek is really the one that we, he's the X factor to keep our eye on in this tournament as we go into the last 45 minutes of fishing because he is the one who can grow the most. He's got a limit of for seven pounds. The only one less than that is 10th place Cover David two, Gaston, like but he's still only four it, three know. from the lead. He needs a simple 11 and a quarter. To get a bite right now. There she is. That might help. Would you just wish that fish hey, to happen, I'm just Ronnie? Saying it's, a, it's a timing deal. Window of opportunity for Derek and a little bit of luck on my side. It's for not that big, but I don't want to lose it. Everything can call for him and can get him slightly, slightly closer. He's been operating with a crankbait. about three off that tree if I didn't get on it, probably. His file hooked. <laughs> 
course, I had to follow her up on that tree, though. A little better. She wasn't going nowhere. She was hooked good enough. I get a bad habit of ripping baits out of fish's faces and I try to horse them too much. They may be in this little section. That's three bites and three bites and two minutes. I want that tree back though. There. A little better All for him. Two guys who we said needed to make a move this afternoon have done, have they, they answered the call. Derek Lettman trying to call up there and Paul Marks with a fat spotted bass. And I say that in the most endearing way possible for the spot, in case he's a little self-conscious. I'm seeing a lot of leapfrog in here. Brian knew and maybe Marks will make, jump up for a couple guys with this fish. He had a lot of fish this morning as I look at his counts that were in that one and a half to two pound range, you know, give or take ounces. And so if they if they behave for him, that coal beam will help him out. But if they start to, he'll have to weigh them like he is right now. Five minutes Martin of action, Ronnie. Might be just an hour or two later, though. That's the problem. I might start biting a little bit later. Oh, cow, that one hit me hard. She drag slipped. I've got to tighten it back up. Finish that thought, Derek. That was a good, some good intel there he was about to give us. A little later today than normal, though. Definitely a lot later than normal, but I'm starting to get a few bites, but I might run out of time, unfortunately. But now I'm getting a few more bites, just putting a little bit more confidence in my head to stay up here instead of leaving. And hopefully it holds. We'll give it a few more minutes anyway. We'll keep going. I got several piles of fish if they're starting to do it. I mean, if you look around, you're starting to see the bait get up too. Mm -hmm. There's something changing. Derek Lettman on the left side of your screen. Good time to run a little beaver culvert again, but I really don't have enough time to go fish it effectively like I need to. There's a fish on that tree, on that brush. There's a couple on it, but I don't know if he'll bite. Derek Lettinen was talking about sometimes these guys in Bassmaster Opens, like you said, Such, the boat draw does affect your day, maybe in the morning, but especially in the evening. If you have a late boat draw, you may catch two or three key fish after three o'clock, you know, 
three thirty, four. You got that longer day. You get yeah. You catch a couple time key to fish, fish and... that you won't even be on the water that time of day on day two because you flip the script. And for sure, in the top ten, everyone's in the first flight. No one's checking in after after the first check-in flight. So some of these guys who bank on that evening bite, they need it to be mid-afternoon bite and get a little right before three o'clock time, so they can make it back and check in. It's starting to heat up and Derek Lettinen made a call, but also had a couple other bites. He's within one bite range, Ronnie. Three if pounds, three ounces back. The deadliest thing that can hurt an angler is being a local on a body of water and getting stuck in history. The best thing ah. for a local is when the time <laughs> is crunched and you're up against the wall, you can run a lot of spots that are high efficient, high confidence areas. And for Derek Lettinen, he may try to do that to make up this four pound gap he is behind Tristan McCormick and maybe take home the title on his home lake. We will see when we get back. Live coverage of the St. Croix Bassmaster Southern Open at Lake Hartwell is sponsored by Ranger Boats, Yamaha, Toyota, Berkeley, and by Progressive. Welcome back to Bassmaster Live here. The final 30 minutes or so of action for us. I've been wrong all day just by a few minutes though. Check-in isn't when our show is finished. It's just a few minutes after that at 3.15 Eastern time. So a lot of the guys will probably pull up their trolling motor when we're ending the show and head back to Green Pond, Green Pond Landing where the final weigh-in will conduct Shortly after they check in, they'll do it right there at the amphitheater. What a great place that we saw huge gatherings of fans there at the Classic Such. Yeah, that's where, uh, you know, there are 5,000 people, I think, at the launches. That, that facility they built, the amphitheater, just incredible. The new dock, that is one of the premier bass fishing uh, facilities in the country. It's a fishing community and I was I was excited man if there was a tie for the classic they might have made them fish the next day and instead of trying to bring in two anglers to an uh, arena with crowd we just do it right there at the, at the way the inside, you know? a little chilly in the morning. Yeah just. maybe. I haven't seen Shane in a while. Uh, we're still sitting on the fish we started with this morning just I don't know what's happened. I know that this bite that I'm doing is gradually going away for whatever reason, but uh, today it seems to be totally gone. I mean, all week long there's been a lot of brim and stuff up around the docks, and today there's just not much going on up there. I don't know why, but it um, it's not happening. We've caught three or four on the jig, no keepers. No, I mean, I think they were keepers, but no um, no help to our bag. I think we're about, just judging by what's going on, I think we're about one bite away from scaring them. Just, if we could get one three and a half or four pounder, I just, I don't know, man, that would put us up there, I think, about where we need to be to have a shot. Uh, it's too late to <laughs> it's too late to drop back and pump now so we just got to stick it out and hopefully we uh, slide our little jig in there in front of one and he bites it Yes, it has. Uh, I think there's just a, I think there's a whole series of things right now that's going on with, with the, with the water. Um, the water falling, the water's warming up from, you know, it's gotten up in the 80s the last couple of days, and I think that, um, uh, I think that has a lot to do with putting the fish on the move again. They were starting to transition and get, um, get where they normally are this time of year. With all that uh, changing, you know, the fish, they change too. They just don't do one thing and stay, play, stay in place. And, you know, it's, 
It's been going on two days now, and I have not been able to relocate where they're at, where they're going, or anything. So, like I said, we're just going to keep doing it. We're about 45 minutes from check-in anyway, so like I said, it's too late to drop back and punt now. So we're just going to keep on keeping on and try to get it in front of one. Lineberger started the day in ninth place. Ronnie got to first place with that kind of six pounder. He's, mm -hmm. he's been stuck on 12 pounds, 12 ounces since I think about 10 a.m. Yeah, and trying to get up here to the shade right quick. Shane, Shane will be disappointed with anything other than first. He obviously oh. knew he had a shot and didn't want to adjust any going into today. He knew that even though he fell back to ninth place coming into the final day, that he still could do his deal and run the pattern just in a different part of the lake. And so for Shane, He'll be disappointed with anything that's not first, but man, if there's ever been a day that a weight, a, a six pounder could be a waste, today may be the day because when you catch a six pounder at Lake Hartwell, you have to have over 15 pounds. Like you gotta have, you gotta have up, up, up above that mark. And he knows that he's got four with that six pounder that just won't do. Yeah, he's three one behind Tristan McCormick here. And he'd need about a 16-pound bag, oh and he'd love gosh, that 17 loaded, or 18. Jake. Got to do it right here. Don't know which one's a cast at. There's like three groups. Tristan McCormick is who you're hearing from in the top left of your screen. Come on. What a cast, Tristan, not a boy. Sam. Depending on the run time from Green Pond Landing, got about a half hour left to fish, Ronnie. 45 minutes till the final check-in. Yeah, it's probably, I mean, the guys who are down at the dam, it's gonna take 10 to 15 minutes for them to come up for sure. Doesn't look like boat traffic's an issue today. I don't know if Clemson has a home game or not. No, they're away. They're away? Okay, yeah. so they might've had, that they might have bad. a good <laughs> traveling crowd today then. They might have a good traveling crowd. I think I think I remember Neil Paul talking about the few years we've had the opens at Hartwell in the fall. They've had to do it on an away Clemson week. Now that now that we mentioned that, I think they had to work they it. They have in. to because there's so much boat traffic of people. Not boat traffic. traffic, but necessarily just town traffic. Just everybody, all the hotels are booked up. You don't have enough ample places for anglers to stay. Might that might be the deal. Eat it.
I mean, Jason Christie did it here seven months ago in the Classic, but how often do guys catch a win, the winning fish in the final half hour, Ronnie? It's kind of rare. Oh, yeah. To pull out, you know, come from behind. You never do know when that fish catch will come, Such, no. and sometimes it's not as, or it's a little anticlimactic. It's not as magical as of a catch as you might think, but it's the one, you know, Brandon Polinick, we talk about every fish for him mattered this year, but the one four, to win angler of the year, you <laughs> yeah. know, that type of thing. He needed a, just a one four to make the cut and basically lock it up. He did do his job the next day, but you always hope for a big one to be the last one. Lucas Murphy hooked up again and catching plenty of numbers today. Had a great day for him to be all the way up as high as third or fourth and slip down to eighth or ninth. It's a very crazy tournament with how the weights have been. Kudos to Lucas Murphy. Knocking it out of the park in his first ever week fishing Lake Hartwell in a new state that he lives in, South Carolina. as they were the last few days, but we'll take it. I'll start figuring out what I got here. He might could get the five ounces he needs to move up uh, one more spot. <laughs> It'd be nicer to get that extra point, the extra few hundred dollars on the payout. That's the one big thing with herring eaters and fish that are gorging themselves on bait fish. Catch them earlier in the day and it makes a call for you. Might regurgitate some shad, some herring in the live well, and your third best fish might be your fourth best fish after that, and you need to call him out quicker. So it's a good little midday or late day re-weigh re re and make sure your calls are accurate. Especially if you see a lot of those bait fish in your live well. Oh, no doubt. Kind of have a heart to heart and say, which one of y'all didn't finish your food? And one gives you a guilty look, you call him out. Let's dogs do that, Ronnie, not fish. Oh, they okay. don't. Oh, no, fish. no guilty look. Fish don't have guilty looks, I don't think, do they? David Gaston working pop R up shallow all day long. Now he's got some shade lines to work with. Go. Our leader, Tristan McCormick, is going to make a move. So we keep looking at David Gaston. So he's second in the overall opens point standings, but after two events, he's first in the centrals, and he still has Sam Rayburn ahead. What's of him. his gap over over fourth place in the centrals? Oh, you're looking uh, fourth place, Doug G, G U I N S, Doug Goins. Goins. I mean, it's you know as many fish as there is offshore. If you go shallow, you don't see many. But when you do, he's a big one. He's got a bigger point margin. And when you catch one, he's a little one. But you can see big ones overall. Fourth, that would qualify. You That's know, what messed third. me up during practice. I could either make them follow my lure on live scope, or I could make them follow my lure, and I could watch them follow it. It's a pretty old pine tree right there. A little bit deeper water.
That's cool about having a fan optics. You ain't got to fish it all the way through the boat if you don't see one under it. Some of the bites he's had this week on this pawpaw suit when he's seen the wolf packs of fish. He'll cast it and sometimes it splashed and before it landed and came back up to the surface, you know, it goes under the water for just he's a second, got, comes up. He's gotten some bites that way and then there's been some that he's had to work it in front of and get him to chase it towards the boat. And he said that's what he was just kind of mentioning. You can either visibly see him chase it to the boat or you can see him on, on live scope and panoptics being able to see them swim out towards the trolling motor and you continue to keep working your bait. David Gaston's doing fantastic. It's Feels carried in three days. Oh, it's such a relief. I want to see this blow up. Started in third place, he's followed the 10th well, round, he's got six, 12. Well, my lovely wife and my sweet little baby for being up here, my Aww. mom and dad and little sister, and also my mother-in-law, you know. You gotta throw her in the mix. She's a cool mother-in-law, though. I can't complain. And on everybody back home watching that I disappointed today. I apologize. Guess I'll see y'all at church in the morning. I think he has much need to apologize, Brian. He had a pretty good week. Oh, yeah. If this is going to be your tough day, why not make it? You're in the top ten, yeah. yeah. But going into the final day, being tied for second, it's definitely, you know, you, ha you have the opportunity. If he knew Derek Lettinen was struggling, you know, maybe as much as he had been today. Maybe that three pound lead didn't seem so big. It can also frustrate you, but I don't think David would have fished it any other way. He's fishing exactly the pattern that's gotten him there. As a lot of these guys are making moves, every time we go to an angler, they're wanting to pull up the trolling motor and make a move. It's the last 30 minutes of the day. We will see if someone can get a big call to come out and play. Whoa! Whoa! Look at the size of that bass! Live coverage of the St. Croix Bassmaster Southern Open at Lake Hartwell is presented by Mossy Oak Fishing. Last little stretch, about 19 minutes left in our day of fishing here at the St. Croix Bassmaster Southern Open on Lake Hartwell. Brian knew some shots from his boat earlier today as he was making a run, and that is what a lot of anglers are doing. If you have a brush pile, if you have a stretch of bank, maybe a couple docks that you want to fish, you have just a few more minutes to get it done before you head back to Green Pond Landing for the final day check-in. Get after it. If you take a lay of the lake, Such, where do you think we're going here with our Ooh, 10? Who's going to be making an impactful catch? back up a little bit catch? and let's go forward. Who is going to be? Not John Garrett. He's had a good afternoon run, Ronnie. John Garrett, former classic competitor through the college series. Having a good afternoon. He's up to 13 pounds, 14 oh. ounces. It's so much fun having you, little baby. It's been a great day for I John Garrett. I said yesterday she cried because she wanted to be with me in the bag line. You're a little. And she, but she didn't. She don't care about David me. She just that water. Well, you know? John Garrett down yeah, towards the dam suit. She's been making it. that top on, water work real well for him. What's this that going to do? Tell me, get my kid out. Of <laughs> I could have. I mean, of course, I'd like to upgrade a lot, but can't be disappointed with it. Well, stay Hooked on, up. baby. I don't know what size he is. He don't feel very big. Yep, it's a nice one. I knew he was going to it. I just didn't think he was going to eat it. teeth rubbing. So 
I got a feeling that John Garrett's got a little bit more than he has. Nothing dramatically crazy, but I think he's a lot closer than two and a half back. So deep his bladder started coming out. <clears throat> Thought it was a three pounder. Ronnie, where did we start this year? At the Southern Opens, Brandon Lester went in this first, automatically qualifying for the Classic if he fished the other, other two in the Southern Division. Coupe Gallant, Canadian, won at Cherokee Lake. And we've got uh, our final Southern Open here at Lake Hartwell. We know our elite qualifiers. Bryant Smith's right there. We could have two of our three elite qualifiers this year with a win with Joey Safuentes almost winning in Florida just behind Brandon Lester. <coughs> So if you get a yeah, victory hey. or close to one in one of the opens, no man, help. you just need a couple more days of good fishing to make your Elite Series dream come true this year. Yeah, looking at the centrals, we start at Ross Barnett, Lee Livesey, 25 pounds the first day, one with 48.11. And then uh, at the Red River, not long ago, Keith Poche, former Elite Series. Angler, getting back to the classic and Qualified for the elites. We got Sam Rayburn coming up in two week, two weeks from now. That's where we got a little bit of a discovery of Masayuki Matsushita when he won at Sam Rayburn in the fall in 2020. We were out with Bassmaster Live for that event. We get to see Josh Douglas as well. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Uh, the last two years, part of the one of the main reasons I've been able to fish the opens is uh, my title sponsor, Best on Tour free uh, newsletter covers everything in the bass fishing industry comes straight to your email once a week so best on tour.net sign up for that i contribute a lot to it a lot of industry people contribute to it kind of keeps you in the date on what's going on um obviously uh there's a lot of listeners to bass talk live the podcast that i host and uh their support the emails the texts the comments uh i read every one of them when i have a functioning phone uh and I really greatly appreciate it. Means a lot and looking forward to getting back into it. But uh, Bass has, has done a lot of work recently to try to make the Opens the best experience. FS1 and the live on the last day of the Opens is one of that. So also just a shout out to, uh, to Hank and the Bass staff for, uh, for working on the Opens and trying to make it the best experience possible. So <sighs> I'd like to shout out those three nice ones that I lost earlier. <laughs> but uh, it's it's just been a it's been a grind all day today. Um, I thought that I'd be able uh, to to hit a lot more fresh fish with not nearly as many boats on the water, but uh, they just I only found two or three spots where they were active. Uh, and when you get bit like that, you got to take advantage of it. So. Uh, Enjoyed it, fished as hard as I could. That's about all I got. Pretty good synopsis. I think that guy does talk that's, for a living, so that's not too that's bad. That's good enough. Yeah. That's good enough. I know. Up to your standard, time. Such. Enough. That's for... Yeah. Yeah, I got five kids, so. Yeah. He's three three back, Ronnie, with eight pounds even. That that close to five pounder. Well, let's run do the down. Trick. I hate to keep doing this to you, but we gotta go.
Mm. I gotta go hit a couple places. Trey Bruce gonna batten down the hatches as he makes a move. It looks like Tristan McCormick just got to his spot to maybe try to catch another fish or two. Didn't run down the Northerns, Ronnie. Is he gonna oh, talk to my Tristan? Life. Yeah. Hey, I just want to give a huge shout out to all my family, all my friends. I've had a, a bunch of text messages in the last couple days, and y'all don't know how much that means to me and my fiance. You know, it's just I couldn't do it without them. The support's unreal. I have so many people that reach out, and it's just truly a blessing. And I'm just blessed to be able to do this. That the good Lord provides me to do it. So I need one big bite. Hopefully I can get it here in the last 20 minutes or so, and we'll see. I left it all out here. I know that for sure. And thank you guys uh, on live, Ronnie, Christy. You guys are awesome. Suge. Maybe we'll be back one day. <laughs> I got a feeling Tristan doesn't think that he's I'm trying to catch one for Christy on Huh? Oh, Again, yeah, and Suits. My bad, Suits. Again, he doesn't <laughs> think he's good thing. about Thank me. You, I don't know about Ronnie. No. <laughs> Ronnie never talks good about me. Sure he does. I got a <laughs> feeling Tristan doesn't think he's got this. Oh, exactly. Ronnie's a man. Same I love Ronnie. Meeting, he knows that. Winning, he's a college you know. guy. He's talking crap like that. about Most... right now. I guarantee it. He does need a haircut. Christy, they ain't biting a daggum jig. <laughs> It was a year and four days ago he won our college classic bracket. A big comeback. Wetumpka. Are we still alive? Yeah. I want to give one more shout out to Eternal Lithium because I've been running these batteries hard the last three days and they hadn't let me down. If I was running AGMs, I'd be dead by 11 o'clock. I got a three pounder here in the last 10 minutes yesterday. Let's go see if there's any. Oh, my mom, all my friends, all my partners. Thank you for everything you do. I know you've been watching me and pulling for me today and done all I could. It hadn't been a terrible day. We didn't completely suck, but we sucked a little. It's never good. But hey man, top 10, top 10, last event of the year, one angler of the year in the opens, really good year. I mean, opens, elites, everything, it's been a great year. And uh, I'm glad to end it on a good note. Yeah, I mean, I was really, really wanting to win this thing. And, you know, it ain't over yet, but it's really daggum close. And uh, I don't think I got enough time at this point. I mean, I got three minutes, I feel like, and I'm gonna be pushing it. So we're gonna have to get her truck and probably gonna make one more cast here and that's all we got. I mean, did everything we could. I have no regrets other than the first day. I learned a lot. Every time I come to Hartwell, I learn something. I get a little bit better and you know, that's the name of this game. You gotta constantly learn. You never, don't care how good you are and what you know, you never know enough. But let's go. Got to make it back to Wade in time. I don't know how far he is in the Tougaloo right now away, but you got about 23 minutes till you need to be back in. He's got it clocked out where he said, I got to go now. Yep. And since we're back on Tristan, I do, I do think he needs a haircut. You know, he would look a lot taller if he cut his hair. You know what I'm saying? That affects your height. You know that, Such. No, I didn't know yeah. that. Yeah. You got big hair, you look smaller. Ears lowered, yeah, you look a little oh. taller. You know. Anyway, I, I was surprised in yeah, Northern lost, Opens that Kenta Kimura won with 65 pounds. At the James River in April, baby, pounds. yeah. We'd only gone to the James River really in June and July. We went in May one year and Brandon Polinick won, and then we went in April this year. Do I now? It was 25 pounds leading on day one. Oh yeah, my wife, my family, uh, you know, they, uh, my mom and dad, my sister came down yesterday. 
made a two-hour drive down and got to go eat dinner with them last night. That was fun. My wife is, uh, like I said, my daughter's playing, you know, volleyball, and my wife's trying to do homecoming stuff for her and all that bunch of stuff, so I'm sure my wife will be down here today as my daughter goes to uh, <laughs> the homecoming dance tonight. <laughs> so she won't get to be here, but that's okay. She'll make it to the next one, I'm sure. Uh, let's see, who else? Oh, yeah, um, my podcast. I got a podcast, me and a couple guys at home. It's called Rusty Hooks Live. Uh, you guys ain't doing anything Monday nights. It's 7 o'clock Eastern Standard Time. Check us out. It's rustyhookslive.com. We all will. <laughs> it's a fishing podcast, but you don't ever know what we're going to talk about. Sometimes it's fishing. Sometimes it's wrestling. Sometimes it's racing. It's whatever. One of the guys that does it with me, he's a ex-professional baseball player, so we get a little baseball going on in there too and have us a good time. Randy, he's eighth overall in the opens points. Lineberger? Yes, sir. I didn't know he was fishing all nine, so I'm so you said eighth overall. What's it he? says eighth overall. What 11, is he behind John Suckup? 1,180 points. So he's about 28 behind sixth place John Suckup. Really? Yes. Okay, I did not know that. Well, with this week, yeah, top ten here. I didn't I didn't realize he was fishing all nine. And that's I thought he was and, just fishing and the Southern. And so. between them. Oh, yeah. Who won our first Northern Open? Casey that's Smith won it, our second it doesn't Northern Open. It doesn't matter <laughs> if we are in, if you're in 15th in points. You if know, you I know go the top down. three. Wow. What matters is the point difference between it. You know, it's like a Hartwell where first to tenth is only five pounds. There'll be sometimes some events first to tenth is a lot of pounds. So if you're within 28 points now? at Rayburn, Good that's doable. That's huge. Now Bradley Hallman is ninth, but he's only got 11. 134 points. So you're talking 46 back of Lineberger. That, oh, 46 behind Lineberger. Yes. And eight, For and one spot? Nine, yes. Oh, one okay. spot. There's a big mm. separation That's in there. Got, you're getting the to the point where you have to get top 10 and hope for someone to get a hunt, you know, 80th. Yeah. Fall. Which is very doable in the fall at Rayburn. We will see. Shane Lineberger, yes, has been on the Elite Series in the past. A couple stints with the Elite Series and would like to probably qualify and make it back. I've seen some high points with him, like Dardanelle. He's put a pop bar to work. Um, had a good finish here at Hartwell 2019. We had also a good top 10 finish at Gunnersville for Lineberger in 2021. Bryant Smith is hooked up. He told me place. he didn't like lakes like Fork where you could bang your boat up a bunch with all the, all the Stumps, and he probably doesn't like uh, some of the other Southern Texas, the Toledo beds. Well, he can fish. He can <laughs> fish docks and not bang his boat up, so he can get around standing timber. I believe in him. I would have thought we'd seen a bigger bag than 14-2 today. That's our top bag, Tristan McCormick, our leader. That's all the largemouth guys not getting the kicker bag. 14 pounds a day, though, for our leader. Right now, looking at Tristan McCormick, he had 16 and he had 14. Another guy who caught all spotted bass, Lucas Murphy, 14 and 14. So 14 has been a very consistent number for spotted bass this week. It's just your hope or prayer if you're doing all spotted bass that the leader's weight, which is largemouth heavy, slips down on one of those days. It did for Lineberger on day two. It did for Derek today. That's probably pretty hard well, to say, I'm going to catch five spotted bass, three pounds each, and get to 15 pounds. Oh, I know. But see, the, their shots two on and goal a half, two and three been quarters. a lot. Yeah. You've just seen how many calls they've had to make to get up to that. Versus guys like Lineberger have a big one. They do not have a bunch of keepers today. Tristan McCormick with 15 minutes left before check-in. Can he ride it out? and win his first Bassmaster Open and make his second Bassmaster Classic. 
We saw a lot of great fishing today. David Gaston up shallow on top water. Derek Lettinen showing, hey, another top 10 on his home body. Maybe he'll put it together. He still has 15 minutes to try to get it done, making another move just a few minutes ago. We'll see if it yields something prosperous. Brian New had a big flurry there in the middle of the day where he was making up a lot of weight and culling out his bags of fish. Had guys like Matt Pangrak, John Garrett, big spotted bass, Bryant Smith. A lot of guys from below fifth place are occupy, occupying our top five today. Who will win it? Lucas Murphy, maybe. Michigan angler transplanted to South Carolina and learning the spotted bass game. Kind of oh like small Maybe I'll have to like check out the weigh-in this afternoon, Ronnie. Yes, I will watch the weigh-in, and I've watched I every minute too. of fishing today. Shane Leinberger, six-pounder. Will that be big bass of the tournament? Will this one right here be the one that gets Tristan McCormick? $40,000 to his total mm. prize money, and then also a classic berth. We will see, but congratulations to everyone in the Southern Opens who qualified. Brian Smith, Cooper Gallant, Joey Safuentes. Congratulations to the top 10, our co-angler winner yesterday as well. Congratulations to the top 10 fishing today. We will see a champion in just a few minutes on Bassmaster.com. Probably check there around 3.15, 3.30 Eastern time. But for Mike Sukon, Jason Christie, I'm Ronnie Moore. We will see you in a few weeks at Sam Rayburn Reservoir, Bassmaster Live.